Look at what? Oh, Mo, Larry, and Curly. Mo, Larry, Curly. How, hey, hey, we're not on here. All right. You're not going to be on on the um, on here, but you can no, no, the, on here. Th there's a delay. Oh. We're on. We're live. We're live. Yeah. See. Holy dog shit! Hey, everybody! Happy Sunday. Though you fight to stay alive, your body starts to shiver because no mere mortal can resist the evil of the Moose and Squirrel Show coming to you live through 40,000 watts of bullshit from Derry, New Hampshire. It's JD3. It's Bo. We got a special guest today, our dear pal. Why don't you give him a little introduction there, we got Borgard? The, we, we got Doc Mock here from, um, what's the name of your show? Macab Theater. Macab Theater. Macab Theater. We got Macab Theater. We got we got Dark Mark. He's the whitest guy to ever refer to himself as Dark, and he's going to be joining us, and we're going to talk about Dark Soul. He's from he's from Nassau, Bahamas, right? Isn't that correct? So you guys know we're talking about horror movies today. We're going to we're going to go through our favorite horror movies, and Mark is he's got his own Facebook page, Macab Theater, and that's everything you do on that page is. Yes, movies, it's yeah. mo mostly um, movie reviews. I try to uh, dig up lesser-known films people might not be aware of. Um, like Jaws? Yep. Yeah, like Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> my but, favorite movie. I saw that when I was six. Uh, one of my favorites as Me well. Me too. Absolutely. I remember as a kid, we used to go to my aunt's house, and my parents would play cards, and they would leave us kids in the room, and... Every once in a while, Jaws would be on, and I used to. It was like the only horror movie my parents would let me watch, yeah. and then then they would take me to the beach the next day. Well, <laughs> I, I, li I lived on Winter Beach, and after Jaws came out, my parents were like, "Fuck this, we're moving to Malden." <laughs> <laughs> that's not a surprise. Nope. I'm surprised they didn't leave you on the beach, though. No, well, they tried. <laughs> well, that's how I learned to swim. Yeah. My father was like, "Fuck it," just threw me right in the water. I got a hang of it as soon as I got out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was pretty easy after that. That's how that's how it goes, folks. All right, so we, we got we got a lot to do today. So we're gonna get right into the movies here. Yep. So we, we put together a list of movies, uh, movie franchises, lots of movie franchises with the horror movie genre. And and to me, the the franchise all started with Halloween. So let me uh, let me have a little couple mouse clicks here. We go there, and boom, there we go. So Halloween. It's Halloween time, I, and to me, this is where the horror, I mean, there was definitely horror movies before this, but this, I think, was the franchise, the movie that started the franchise. It started the slasher genre franchise where, you know, you spawned off Friday the 13th and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street were direct, directly because of right. the, the Halloween movies Even and their success. Even though before that was Black Christmas. Yep. It yep. very similar to Halloween. Yes. Time. Yep. And Chainsaw. Yep, yeah, yeah, Texas Chainsaw, that, absolutely. But be completely, completely different type of filmmaking for that. But, uh, no doubt. But uh, yeah, Halloween um, is probably one of the most messed up franchises ever. Uh, the, the, the timeline. Choose your, choose your own adventure. Yeah, the, so, the, yeah. the timeline for Halloween is all over the place. I mean, the first two movies obviously were the same night, you know, from, from one to two, the sequel. Seamless. The, yeah, seamless. And they just cool. went, I mean, two starts at the end of one. You know, when you, if you watch uh, Halloween 2, it's the last five minutes of Halloween 1. It, it literally right. takes right from one to the other. And I love both movies, but I'm going to point something out to you and, and see if you don't agree with me. Okay. Educate us. The ending of that movie, what was so scary. The credits. Well, yeah. Well, when he is is missing, he's gone. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and then they show a shot of everywhere in the film where he once was. Yes. Okay. You leave that movie, looking behind your shoulder. You're yep. worried, Wiggy. The problem with two completely wipes that out. Ex when it's they gone. blow him up at the end of two, yeah. there's none of that. And and even th you're talking about the end of part one. You hear him when they're showing all the spots where they've seen him. Yeah. You hear him breathing in the mask. So it's which letting you know. A trope too. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it, it lets you know that he's not dead. He's still out there. And that was that's what I thought was so masterful about that Halloween movie was it was it wasn't your typical jump scares slasher gore because there was very little blood in the yeah. movie, if any at all. I mean, there was almost no, no blood. There was plenty of murders, but it was that suspenseful. He was stalking people, yes. and it made it just really creepy and eerie, and it made you afraid to, you know, when you went up and to your bedroom, you checked the closet and under I, the bed. I did not see that in the theater. Too, too young. I did see yep. that on HBO. I think it came on HBO 
1979, 1980, it was <clears throat> a year or so after the film had come out, and you saw Pan and Scan. Yeah. Okay. When Letterbox became such a big deal with VHS, and you were actually able to see that movie presented the way it was supposed to be presented, the scene with Annie in the car, and he's in the back seat. Yep. All you see in the Pan and Scan is he sits up, he grabs the neck. The, 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 the Letterbox, you see the full back him sit up in the back of the car yep. and then grab a wow what a difference Some, it, stuff it, like that makes spoiler it alert <laughs> it, and, and it made it that and that's what made that movie just creepy and it, I still say to this day that there's not a scarier movie than the original Halloween uh, just the, the music the the lighting just everything about it was just creepy and it was believable it was like if they said it was based on a true story there's really nothing in that that you there was no supernatural he didn't have superpowers he didn't get shot uh, in, in the head and, and get back up I mean in some of the later movies, he, you start to see that about him. But in that original movie, you know, he got poked in the eye with the coat hanger. When when she stabbed him, she stabbed him in the shoulder. So all things that wouldn't kill somebody, right. but just kind of, and that's what made the movie creepy and made it scary, and because you right. could see that that and, was and happening. For, and for Carpenter, it was one and done. Yeah. Uh, they just really dumped money on him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Too, and he, he wanted no part of it. The and, push. Uh, they gave it a push. And, and like that, Christine. That, that was just it. it but two. I like because it was seamless. It went, went right from the other, and it was still more of the creepy stalking. You know, he's stalking her in the hospital, getting to the hospital, killing the people in there, and, you know, the, the final one, he's chasing her through. Just, and all the characters, you know, Dr. Loomis, obviously, great character in that movie, and, and he helped build that, uh, that suspense in the movie where he's, you know, he's stalking Michael, Michael stalking Laurie, yes. and it just made for so much. And I actually, a lot of people didn't like it, but when they said that Laurie Strode was Michael's sister, which in some of the later movies they said never happened, it wasn't true. She, but to me, that added to it, which made it understand why he was chasing when, her. When I was 12, it did. Yeah. I she was that, and as I got older, I think that was a big part of all the confusion that that happened in that franchise. Yeah. And as opposed to just turning direction, they had to keep incorporating the fact that they were related, and right. it just muddled the entire and made it really tough to keep. And she out. was oh, oh. very naked in Playboy in 1974, Laurie, the sister. Really? Yeah. Oh, the, the one that we know that was uh, Judith Myers, the one that was killed in the very beginning. The first death Ju yeah, in that's Halloween. Judith Myers. She that was, was his older sister that yes. he kills in the very sister, beginning. Yep. She was a Playboy playmate. Yep. And that's all I know I about that movie. Yes, sir. That's uh, he, he did a little bit of homework, so. Well, He's like, oh, wait a minute, naked actually, women? Yeah, in a movie? It, oh, I, know I don't know if the, uh, my phone knows my algorithm or something, <laughs> and, and a, a playmate from 74 popped up, and it happened to be Mike My Michael Myers' sister. Yeah, if you pause that movie just right, you get a little bit of side boob on there where he's killing her when he's oh, sitting at the thing. You got, side you got to pause it just right. Yes. But the, the rest of this franchise, mm -hmm. Halloween 3, I just thought was just dumb. I didn't like the idea. I didn't like the story. I, I also felt the advertising for that was very misleading. If you watch any of those ads, uh, there's nothing to to say that it's a different story. Right. And I, myself, everyone else left that theater scratching their head. At the time, I was mad. I hated it. I, but years later, I take it as its own story. I, I still see Carpenter's touch in there. Yep. Uh, and this movie will give you dandruff. Every now, and and I'll tell you, the idea was ahead of its time. They make an anthology movie yep. every year based around the time of Halloween. It's genius. It just people weren't ready for that. I, I, and I agree. And it, it's funny because people will throw the trivia question out there and they say, what movie was Michael Myers not in? And he's actually in Halloween 3. Yes. Wayne's World. There's a, the, yep, there's a spot where, and I don't even remember the guy's name, but he was the, the main character in that movie, and he's sitting at a bar having a beer, and the movie that's on in the background is Halloween, and you see Michael Myers you know, stop at the top of the stairs, and then he runs down the stairs chasing after her, so he's actually in the movie. But a lot of people go, oh, three didn't even have Michael Myers, and I'm like, uh-uh, he's actually in it. Yeah, he spilled his 48-ounce Coke, yeah. he <laughs> dropped his popcorn, he was, all, he was a big he mess. He was Tom like... Atkins. He's going to be a Tom Atkins. And th was that the, the actor? Yeah. Okay, see, so yeah, I... I I've seen the movie, it, it just, I have a heart, I'm not a supernatural, and you're going to hear me say this a lot today, I don't like the supernatural horror, and that was supernatural kind of yeah. stuff, it was, you know, one guy that didn't, apparently didn't like Halloween, and didn't like kids, and was putting masks on them, and making bugs it, and snakes it, it come gave, out of their mouth. It gave Carpenter to correct something he did wrong in Halloween, too, because everybody was pronouncing it Sam Hain, was pronounced Sawa. Sawa, yes. Sawa. So yes. The yes. Yep. actually saying the, uh, the name wrong, and they, and they call him the, the Yep. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Those um, are the same people that say slant. <laughs> Slancha, you fuckers. Whatever that is. It's uh it's a it's it's a Greek toast. Oh. No, I'm kidding. It's so, uh it's Italian. Part four. And what I wanted to get in is Carpenter and Deborah were both on board with that. From okay. The very beginning. They were ready to do it, they were ready to come back, and they went to uh, Dennis uh, Etchison, who was AKA he's Jack Martin. He did the novelizations of Halloween one, two, yep. three. Um, Carpenter asked him to pen the script. The script is online. If you, and you, it, it's worth looking up and reading. It it's a thousand times better than what Halloween four. Than the, what the movie actually was. was. Right. Um, Mustafa Akkad rejected it and said it was too cerebral for his audience. Again, that's Hollywood dumbing us down. Yep. And, and and. What you ended up getting was really a retread of the original movie, only focused on not the niece. Yep. Uh, and I'm not going to say I don't enjoy it, especially at the time it came. It was 1988, came out. I was there. I was ready. I, other than the way the mask looked. Yeah. I, and, <laughs> and, and, they, and they were bringing him back, which made me want to watch the movie, because if they had done a continuance <laughs> of three, I probably wouldn't have watched four. But bringing back Michael Myers, I watched well, it. Well, they made sure, like, you know, the return of Michael Myers. Yes. Yep. Myers, yep. And 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 that was and those three movies I don't hold a candle to one and two. So in that sense, they're disappointing to me yeah. because after the fir the first two were just so good. You, you lose Dean Cundy. He was the uh, cinematographer. So you, the entire feel and look is gone. Yes. Uh, Carpenter's touch. You can try to imitate it. It's just not the same. So yep. that movie, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it. I still revisit it. Not as much. And, and that's the same. Four, five, and six, it's one of those things I, I don't, I'll never say, oh, I want to watch Halloween 4 or Halloween 5. I, but if, when I'm flipping through, AMC does their, their scare fest and they put all those movies on, I will sit and watch it. And it's watchable, but it's never like, I'll, you, you, you ask my wife, I watch Halloween 1 and 2 year round. It's not a Halloween movie for me. I watch it all the time. Five is the most convoluted mess. Is, is that, is that the one? With the man in black. Yeah, the guy uh, getting off the bus. And Johnny just Cash like, was in it. <laughs> now let me let me tell you. I mean, those are the obvious. Yep. Instead, they had a character you already cared about. You had the foster sister of Jamie, uh, Laurie Strode's uh, daughter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you already cared about these people. Great actress. Yep. They kill her in the first ten minutes. Okay, you have no one to care about anymore except the little girl who's up. They've also made a mute, best actress in both movies, and they're not letting her speak. Mm -hmm. And instead, they introduce you to a brand new character who's just so annoying. Kramer. And, 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 <laughs> and bubbly, uh, that you don't care about, that honestly, Michael Myers has no connection to at all. Right. He's now chasing her. That, the movie is an absolute mess. I Agreed. hate sequels. See. Some the, the first sequel, Halloween 2, was fantastic. I was an English major. It's Halloween also. Oh. <laughs> I'll thank you very much. Um, all right, what else we got here? All right, so... Uh, curse is next. Yeah, The Curse is next. Which is uh, another mess. That was another one that but was... That's post-production post tamper. Get really? me now! Because that movie, again, go... You can... The original script is online. I have his name. Daniel... Day Faraday. Lewis. Faraday. Daniel Faraday. He, uh was a fan and sent the script in to Mustafa Akkad. They loved it. They said, let's do this. Um, the Weinstein, the Weinsteins. All, all, were, all both of them. now part of production. And That's a true life horror story yeah, right there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, exactly. my God, don't let him he, pull down your plants. <laughs> that thing is involved. And, uh, yep. and other that, things. And, and the movie you see is what you get. Yeah, it's, 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 really, it's, it's, it's really bad. It's bad, yes. And it, 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 it taints the franchise because those ones were, were just so bad. And then you get, was it, did Resurrection come out first or was it oh, H2O? H2O. The, H2, okay, so which, H which a lot of people like better than 2018. I, I'm not one of them. Nope, I, I liked H2O. I thought it was good. Yeah. The one thing that I didn't like about H2O was like it. three deaths in the movie. Yes. And huh. I'm just like, not enough killing for me. I, I, I see horror movies because I want to watch people die other than myself. And I want people that I know to die. That's the premise. So I want to watch other people die because I'm, I'm fucked up like that. And there's only like three deaths in the movie. Yeah. And I'm just... Only. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, you know what that movie reminds me of? It's Scream. Yes. And that, by the way, that's going to be on the list here that, yeah. I, that, that we're going to come up to. It's on the list. That, 
I, I enjoyed the movie. I thought there should have been more deaths. There should have been. They got too quick to like that final chase. You know that he he kills the uh, her, her uh, Flory oh. Strode's son. He kills the two friends there. The and then immediately operator. it goes into the chase, and it's just like no, I want to see him kill more people. He steals a car and he kills three people, and it's just like come on, man. Yeah. Like and, and then you got and then you got LL Cool J in the movie too, and I'm just like okay, I don't I don't see where he fits in, but okay. I'm going back to I, I kill you, to Tom kill you, to yeah. kill you. And that I'm going. A lot back of movies started you. doing that in the horror movies with the with the comic relief thing, and I'm going to talk a lot about that when the we talk about. Yeah, when I talk about oh. Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> and I think a blur. it I think it ruined the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. But mm. I liked H2O. Didn't think there was enough killing in it. But I can't live without it. I enjoyed it, and not that kind of H two O. Oh, but I, I actually enjoyed that and thought that they had, you know, kind of brought the franchise back up to respect. And as I said, I, I rewatch all of these with the exception of one, and that's Resurrection. I think that's the worst. So you brought it back? Shoot. Yeah, it's it's, it's awful. And, and Resurrection is the one with Buster Rhymes. Yeah. So that was the everybody was you know, reality TV was huge and everybody was watching Survivor and, Ugh. and Big Brother and all those. It was going to be found footage, by the way. Right? Yes, originally Ugh. Resurrection was supposed to be found footage, and they said, "Hey, Ugh. let's jump on the popularity of all of the reality shows." Ugh. And talk about horror. Yes, Ugh. and it has, it's got Busta Rhymes in it too. Yeah, so, eh, that's uh, that's and, that's and that's good. Ty, uh, Ty, uh, Tyra Banks. Yes. Yes. Well, who's hot? This was worth looking at, but. Um, I, that, I, I'd rather look just, at Buster Rhymes. Yeah, <laughs> I bet you would. Yep. But it was just the whole thing was just kind of stupid, and I, the, the idea was dumb. And I, I'm with you. That's one that's really tough to watch. And 2018. Oh no! Wait, I just I just completely skipped over. 2017. No. Oh. Rob Zombie. Oh, oh. my <laughs> God. Now listen. I, Here's my take on Rob Zombie. Okay. I, I own all his albums. I, I Love Great, him. great band. Well, even Stop when he was bragging. White Zombie. Rob Love Zombie, White, White Zombie. Zombie. Great now, music. as a filmmaker, I think he has a vision. I think he has a style. I think he's excellent. But because he made a couple of music videos, they gave him top launch and came in. You write it. You direct it. You film it. Yep. That's the problem. Exa he's the worst writer, yes. I think, in the history of Hollywood. And if a good writer just came around. Okay. Huge. And they let him film it. Yep. I don't even mean direct it. I mean just let him film it. Let yep. him be the cinematographer. You'd have a great moment. I, I agree. And the acting that so they went the one of the things that made the original Halloween so relatable was that it was a midwestern town. It was a regular family, regular kid, no no background, no nothing, just regular Joe turns into a psycho killer. In the Rob Zombie week remake, he's a white trash. No father, mom's a stripper, yeah. bullied at fucking school, and it's just like you'd it be just. A kill, you'd be a killer too. I, I'm pretty much anybody would be it. So it's just <laughs> like okay, yeah, he's, happens he kills every people. day in, I think in that's schools. Much, it, 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 happens every that, day. What made the original Halloween so scary? There was no reason. And that was he what, looked like he had two perfect parents. Yep. Okay, this kid actually, he's. I, I think this was probably the first time he ever did anything yep. out of the ordinary, yep. and that's what made it terrifying. They should have given him an MRI. And I bet he had a brain tumor. Right. That's what. Head, yeah. Yep, <laughs> fell off the swing. That's Parents what made didn't the love first him. one. That's what made the first one so good. And then Rob Zombie just basically said, "Yeah, white trash, stripper for a mom, no dad, abusive boyfriend, you know, uh, just terrible. Everything about it. I just." And the but, second half of the film is a retread. No mom spaghetti. Yes. Yep. All that stuff you just mentioned was all him, and then it was a re. And I can't try. I can't figure out what. Time era that's supposed to be because if you go in the, of the film, he's playing a Kiss song. Yep. So if you want to, if you want to nail it down to when that Kiss song came out, we're talking about what 1978. Song was it? So it's it's opening in '78. So if you jumped ahead 15 years, where are we? Uh, 86. I, I, I don't math. 86, 75. <laughs> uh, 80. F f f yeah. We uh, come on. Somebody do math. What's 78 plus 15? This is. 92. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't math. All right, 92. 92. There we go. We're in the, we're okay. in the early 90s. So, so, because you've got people in there with cell phones. Yep. You, the girl's wearing a Slayer shirt. The, the one that plays the, uh, totally, you know. Yep. Linda. Yep. That was the Kiss Revenge era. So they should have updated it with the Unholy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his follow-up to that, Halloween 2. Yeah, no, Unwatchable. It's, it's, Garbage. It Unwatchable. So that's I, I, I did like the uh, PTSD part of the characters. Yep. 
but that was about it. It's about ten minutes. The Jill one thing that I that I thought Rob Zombie did really well is the Thunder the, Kiss the, the actor. The actor who played Michael Myers was just looking at him was just a scary looking, just absolutely gigantic, yeah. intimidating to He's like. He's a wrestler, isn't he? Yes, yeah. and and like regular Michael Myers, he would look Jim. at him and you know, if he wasn't wearing the William Shatner mask, wasn't a scary, intimidating guy until you start stalking and creeping around. But the the character that he had in his movies, you wouldn't want to run into in a dark alley or a well lit alley for that matter. He was just creepy, scary looking. Or any alley. Right out across the board. And I think that was about the only thing he did right in his two movies. They were just embarrassing. And I know a lot of my friends love those two movies, and I think they should stop doing drugs because they suck. All right. Awful. So and that's then, 2018. 2018. Awesome. Now, I feel the same way, but it gets a lot of hate. There's a lot of people out there in social media that really don't like that movie. That really, and here's my take: you have the, the people involved with making that movie love the original movie. Yep. They love all the right things about the original movie. They Lady, wanted to Lady take Rebecca. it back to this being not a supernatural thing, right? But um, a serial killer. I, I I thought it was fantastic. There's really not anything I didn't like about it. Um, I couldn't wait for Halloween Kills. Yep. It, we had to go an extra year waiting for that. Yep. And now it's out. That's the new one, right? That's the new one. Yeah. All right. That I've watched and he hasn't, so I'm not going to say I didn't put it on the on the the, the pictures <laughs> he had to talk about. No I want to spoil it. No but, spoilers but I on have that. Nothing bad to say about 2018. I I see it made by people who love um, the original film. Yep. The fact that they got Carpenter in any way, shape, and form, the soundtrack is fantastic. Yep, absolutely. Uh, bringing him back on board as a consultant was the smartest thing they could have done. Uh, Carpenter readily admits Halloween 2, uh, he, he wrote that plot line after a six-pack of beer Yep. because he, he really had nowhere to go. It was also a popular year, year with Luke, I am your father. So he had the chance to see the sequel he would have liked to have seen come to fruition, which couldn't have did that back then anyway because it's jumps ahead 40 years. Correct. Lady Rebecca agrees Halloween 2, terrible. Wait, 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 which, which Halloween 2? The original sequel or the Rob, Rob Zombie, Zombie Halloween 2? The Rob Zombie Halloween 2. I think 2. she's talking about the Rob Zombie. Not, not only is that the, the Halloween 2 Rob Zombie is not only the worst in the Halloween franchise, that might be one of the top 10 worst movies I've ever seen. It's so bad. That it like of anything, and I've seen some bad movies. Was Tom Cruise That's in it? That's awful. And he's another one. He didn't want to make it. No, he just. And they that, dumped a truckload yep. of money on him, yep. and he's why not? And he just slap yeah. it together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like know. manure on Biff's car in yeah. Back to the Future. <laughs> and, and another thing, he's got to stop putting his wife. In his oh, because and that <laughs> the acting in there is just so bad, and putting her in there, and yes. it's just like Mike. It's Who's terrible. his wife again? Sherry. Sherry Moon Zombie. Zombie. Sherry. 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 Oh, uh, all of them. Good luck. That's a lot of that's his testosterone part. there. Yeah, no, he, I, I heard that he was uh, he had that project. So you, you know that's probably gonna suck too. I'm not a fan of any of his movies. Uh, the uh, House of a Thousand Corpses or oh, Zombie see, Devil's I, I, Rejects. I like see, I didn't like them. I thought they were too campy. Not even, Rejects. No, not even Devil's Rejects. I thought they were way too campy, too goofy. The characters were unbelievable. Just goofy, silly. They were intense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think we've talked enough about Halloween. Oh, let's, let's, yeah. Let's, let's get on to the... Let's get on to the, November 1st. Yeah, here we go. So... Oh, uh, the, look at the this. The second biggest movie franchise, horror movie franchise, I would say. Arguably, you could say Halloween or Friday the 13th. I think you could say they're one or two. And some but, say they're still making them you know, to this yes, day. Yes, they are. And Friday the 13th, um, the original Friday the 13th, when it first came out, by the way, Kevin Bacon is in the original Friday the 13th, and I bet most of you don't know that. He's a kid that gets the arrow through his throat. That's Kevin Bacon. Bet you didn't know that. You're learning something new every day here. But hey. the original one, I liked. Everything goes with bacon. But <laughs> I actually, when I go back, it's one of my least favorites is the original fr of, of the Friday the 13th. Oh, SpaghettiOs. No, I'm. All right, hold on a second. It says I'm live, and then I'm not live, and then I'm live, and then I'm not live. Hmm. You working? I'm on. Are you on? All right, so I guess we're back on here. I had an issue. 
but not anymore. By the way, it's, uh, it crapped out on my phone, but it looks like we're here and I'm there. You hearing me now, like right now, what I'm saying, like a couple seconds ago anyways. Testicle difficulties. Yep, there, there we go. That's me talking. So I guess we are still back on. All right. So It's working now, says Bob Lathendra. Okay. I want to take this moment to... Uh, All right, so yeah, so Arnold Horshack and, and Tommy Jarvis, who killed them in four, di dig up the the corpse who gets yeah. struck by lightning. I like this. Uh, yep, yeah, absolutely. I like the storyline for that, but I but I agree with you that the acting in it was a little a, a little wonky. It wasn't as good as it was. You, you didn't get that same feel as some of the earlier movies. No, not at all. And the one that I actually liked less than that. Was the next one with the whole the, the woman with the psych the the, the psycho powers I liked there? I like it much and, better than six. Really? I thought it was more of a return to what they had. Not the same, but it was an attempt. I think adding, I call it Carrie, Carrie versus Jason. Yep, Carrie versus Jason. Um, yep, good analogy. Yeah, it, that storyline doesn't throw me. It's not what I would have did, but I still liked it better than six. It's also, the, uh, I believe that's. The introduction of Kane Hodder. Yes, that was the first one with Kane Hodder. And the big, the back of Jason with the spine. You see yes, the that, the that I thought was awesome. That, that was, no doubt, that was fantastic. Um, I, I have nothing good at all to say about Jason Takes Manhattan. Oh. Again, probably one of my, uh, you want to bottom of the totem pole for me. It, I never revisit that. Totem. You want to. You want to talk about just like campy and goofy? It just it almost got silly, and it was more silliness than there was horror. And there was just the the whole story and going to Manhattan. The only part that was funny in that was when he was walking down Broadway and the kids were listening to the radio yeah. and he kicked it. And the, uh, the they're like, "Yo, what up?" And he turns around and he picks the mask up and they're like, "Whoa, shit!" And they run. That's like the only good part of that movie. Other than that, yeah. I, well, also when he's chasing them through the subway, I like how all the New Yorkers just are just sitting there. Yeah, yeah, just, another yeah. day. Yep, another day. Yeah. 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 A, a, yeah. See, uh, yeah. And what's after that? Jason takes Manhattan, and we then we they do the reboot. Yep, the, the uh, yeah. Which this, I don't uh, know how you feel about that movie. No, no, no. Well, 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 hold on. Nope, that's not the reboot. After Jason oh, takes Manhattan, oh, you, you is know. Jason goes to hell. Jason goes. And Jason X. No such place. Jason goes to hell. Hated it because Jason was really not in the movie. They they blow him up in the you beginning. You want to know why? They bring back Sean Cunningham, who was the producer of the original, who hated the hockey mask. He actually told production, "I don't want to see that. Keep that out of the movie as much as possible." That's this. This is a guy you don't bring into this franchise. Yeah, any, spitting anyone, facts yeah, here. Yeah. Mark Lavoy of Macabre Theater. Check it out on Facebook. He's spitting facts. Real movie facts. So I. Yeah, I don't, re I don't revisit Jason Goes to Hell as, as all much. Uh, yep. Jason X in Space, fun movie. Fun movie. But I, thought, I saw it in the theater, and it was, it was a lot of fun. But, it, again... It doesn't do the franchise justice, because no, it it's more goofy. Yeah. It, it's basically like Star Trek meets Jason, yeah. and it just... It's, Jason goes to service a merchandise. <laughs> a, a great kill with the... With Buys the, a uh, mattress. When they freeze the face and yes. smash it off, absolutely, yes. yep. But uh, the, the, just a lot of, like, the... The android human there chasing him and killing him and that just yeah. I'm just like come on man this is it. but it, what was really cool is after the machine put him back together after they had completely blown him up and he comes out all with the robotic and the new mask for like five seconds I was like that's fucking badass and then like five seconds after that I'm like all right this is dumb, this is dumb again yeah give me give, give me the give me the guy with the uh, the spine showing through his shirt and his skin all rotten off him in the hockey mask it was like five seconds of that's fucking cool. Yeah, no, right, this is and stupid. And then one of my favorites, Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, see? Uh, you don't like it. And, and the, I'm going to tell you why, because I hate Nightmare on Elm Street. Hate it. Okay. But I love really? that they do a monster mash. Because this goes back, this goes back. It to was a graveyard smash. I don't know how you feel about the, the, the Universal Monsters. I am a huge fan. Because this is what I started as a kid when I was six, and I was introduced to uh, Dracula. And Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. You met so to Dracula? See, to, to see a, a oh, monster mashup like that, shit. I wanted more of that. Yes. I wanted them to keep going. Even if they made that its own separate franchise, I would have loved that. I, I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to get off base here for five seconds. Okay? Please do. With CGI. Now, oh. no, wait a minute. Listen, yep. listen, hear me out for a minute. When they made Rogue One, and they knew they needed Peter Cushing's character of Grand Moff Tarkin. Yep. They CGI'd him in. They went to the family. They got it approved with the family. The money went to the family. They did all the right things. 
a lot of people have a big problem with that. Like seeing a Jimi Hendrix hologram show. But, but here's where I go with this. As long as you were going to do the right thing with the money. Yes. And give it to the family, okay? Yep. Can you imagine if a movie opened tomorrow, a monster mash, a Dracula, Frankenstein yep. Wolfman, and you had Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi, oh, great. Ron Chaney Jr., oh. and... Digitally had them on. You gotta get, you gotta get, you, Vin, you gotta get Vincent Price in exactly, there. You gotta talk but, about the old creepy you, guys. Yeah, that wouldn't be. I would love it. By the way, I hope you like that. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a small spoiler. You're gonna see some of that when you watch Halloween Kills. Alice Cooper's uh, still alive. You get him in, there. Throw that's, him that's, in there. That's, that's, huh? as, far, that's no. as far as I'm gonna give you the spoiler no, on that. Yes, yes. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't little teaser so there. No, 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 no. Take away. But, but back to Monster Mashup. That was the whole point. I love that stuff. I love that idea. When, when they first said that they were doing that movie with yeah. Freddy versus Jason, I said, this is going to be great. I just think what they did with it was just, it was all the campy and goofiness of the Nightmare Moose on Elm Squirrel Street. Show. Yes. Yeah, and that was, and, and that that's the next one, so I don't want to talk too much about that one here, but that's what made me not like this movie. All the dialogue and acting in Freddy versus Jason is, is horrific. Yes, terrible. okay, so we so agree. You fast forward through that stuff. Yeah. The, the, the three fights that happen in, uh, are... Yep. What the price of admission? So I will. I will give you that part of the movie I liked, but just when he kills the kid in the beginning, when he folds him up in the Craftmatic adjustable bed, and I'm just I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, that is so stupid. Not a sponsor, I, no, by the way. No, nobody, yeah, not a sponsor. Nobody understands basic physics. If that bed folded up, you would pop out of it. You wouldn't get crushed in the middle of the bed and squished <laughs> like a bug. Just absolutely fire, dumb. A four-year-old would realize that that wouldn't happen to you, but in the movie, ah. It's it Hollywood, just, baby. But that was just that was the silliness and the dopiness of that movie that I hated. But I will give you that. The fight scenes between Freddie and Jason were fantastic. Read Brendan uh, number one fan's comment out loud because <laughs> uh, it's interesting how horror movies started with the Universal monster movies and the directions it had to take to up the game to make things scary. I want to hear Mark's take on that one. Yeah. So how did all right, so how did we get from Dracula and Frankenstein's monster and Great the mummy? Question to Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. How do we get there? Is it just trying to progress into being different and you just had to, you know, people thinking outside of the box? I or? think it's, I think it's, um, sign of the times. Staten Island and Ferry I'm to Battery Park and you take this, a left. This is going to go back to, it's 1974. Okay. You had Toby Hooper. Okay. This was, a, this was an era where, um, Woodstock was over, Vietnam, people were coming back from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Okay. No longer were your neighbors make baking apple pies. Your neighbors were with the Manson family. Yes. Okay? Yep. And so Chainsaw Massacre, the reason that is, again, so little blood but so shocking is because this was the real deal. This was something that, now when I say could happen, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Exactly. But it, it, there's no, it was a new horror. And there's no, the and, when, and when, you, when you say it could happen, we're talking there's no supernatural element to it. Right. It was you, your next-door you, neighbor. Right. You, you think, oh, yeah, no, no, nobody would cut people up and kill them. No, no, Jeffrey actually, Dahmer. I think Jeffrey Dahmer would agree with that. Jeffrey yep. Dahmer was having five guys before they were making burgers. That's right. Well, 74, okay. No one's going to drown their own kids in a bathtub because God told them to, but it happens but it in happens. Texas. Yep. But, and so, again, in 74, so you have very different times we were living in. But actually, before that, if you go to Psycho from, from the 60s, yep. it, yeah. was the, it was the recluse... He's, he's got the mother stuffed in the other room, and he's killing girls that come into the hotel. Yep. So an era where someone was doing that was getting away with it because people didn't think that way. They right. They didn't think things like that could happen or went on. So by the time 1974 happens, We're when shelter. you see that family next door that's really off the wall, mm -hmm. yep. and they end up being the Manson family or, or the Sawyer family, as, 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 uh, as yes. Chainsaw goes. And I don't know how we, we talked about Halloween and didn't talk about the connection to Psycho. You're, you're right. There's, uh, and there's so many. Yeah, and uh, but my, my favorite one, and, and it, it's, it's kind of times two, mm -hmm. is Janet Lee is... Um, Jamie Lee's Jamie mother. Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis's mother. And Janet Lee is the woman that gets stabbed in the shower scene in Psycho. And in uh, H2O, she is Laurie's secretary. You're right, but you also missed something. Sam Loomis, the doctor. Yep. Sam Loomis is the name of the boyfriend of Janet Lee in Psycho. <gasps> in the in the car that um, I love it. Laurie Strode's in. mother. Yeah. yeah that, the car is the same exact car that she is driving in H2O that makes an appearance in the yes. movie. It's the same car from Psycho that she was driving 
And it's one of those things, if you're not a horror fan and you're not a fan of the two movies, you don't realize when that. When she escaped. The woman that was stabbed in the shower in Psycho is Jamie Lee Curtis's mother. And they appeared in a movie together with all kinds of Easter eggs going back to Psycho. That is back fucking to, awesome. Uh, who, who's the person's question? Br- Brendan. 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 Back, back to his original question. So now you have 74, you have Chainsaw Massacre. And yep. then out comes Halloween. And then out comes Friday the 13th. So your Dracula, Frankenstein, and Werewolf, which honestly, it's debatable in this day and age if you could really make that. I think you could make it scary. Yep. As a matter of fact, not to segue too much again. From 58 to the mid-70s, you had the Hammer films, okay, from Britain, which revitalized the classic monsters. Bela Lugosi will always be Dracula to me, yeah, but yep. Christopher Lee scared me as a kid. Yes. He had the blood red eyes, the, 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 the viciousness. Hammer like, films, and if you've never seen a Hammer film and you're, and you're a fan of, of Dracula and Frankenstein, you need to see these movies. So, that being said, in the 1980s, I don't think anybody had an interest in trying to make Dracula scary again. They already had a new set of monsters. And then Education, they put out the cereal. Yep. Freddy. Count Chocula. All right, so Friday the 13th reboot. <laughs> Tis reboot. the season. I really liked it. I loved it. Yes. I absolutely fucked. I was so amped when it came out. And I liked the fact that he went from being like that silent stalker to just being this absolutely massive guy that was just fast. And scary, and just he, never drowned. Was still running around in the woods, yep. which is part two. Yes. So again, we're bringing we're bringing the human factor back into it. And the, and that was I thought that was very well done. The actors in it, the acting in it, I thought was well done. The cinematography, especially you know when they go from the daytime when they had just arrive at at the the camp house and then it goes into the night, just gave you that creepy vibe and that creepy element in, into that, and made it scary. Where a lot of the Friday the Thirteenth kind of got away from that, and they went more towards the campiness of the '90s. And we talked about how campy a lot of the '90 horror movies yeah, got. I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of stuff. That came out. I, I agree, but I thought the reboot was really good, and they are supposed to be doing another one. They're supposed to be doing a part two. Well, it, you know what the hold up there is? It's, it's the whole lawsuit. Yeah, between, this is, between Miller and uh, Cunningham. Arthur and Miller. Dave, um, oh, he was a lawyer. <laughs> you're making me laugh. All right, I'm trying. <laughs> that, that's what he's here for. <laughs> and, and and Richie Cunningham. All right, so uh, death of a salesman and death of a happy days guy. But anyway, they've been battling in court for the last 15 years over mm-hmm. rights, and that's why you haven't seen another Friday the 13th movie, and they're kind of at the very tail end of that. Right. So that, as you said, could be happening very sooner than you think. Right, because I, I know that the, whoever the original uh, screenplay writer was – made a claim to say that he still owned the rights to Jason Voorhees and the hockey mask and all of that and was saying, hey, you can make another Friday the 13th movie, but you can't make it with Jason and the hockey mask because I still own the rights to that. And there was all kinds of battles going back and forth in court as to who actually owned that. And it was just an absolute mess. If they make another movie, I want want, um, uh, uh, Blumhouse. Blumhouse, yeah. They they were the ones that did the the remake, right? Derry. Yes. They should give it to them. Oh, yeah, because they did such a good job with yep. the last one. And please, if you do it, don't make it fucking campy. Don't start getting into the goofiness that a lot of the 90s horror movies got into. I, because I, I, I think that's gone, though. I, I think, hope so. I, I think, and yeah. I think Halloween, the new Halloween show. That I yes. Think that People cool. want the real shit. All right. And now let's talk about campy and goofy. All right. I loved this franchise, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. I loved it as a kid. I watched every one of them. I saw almost all of them in the theater. I loved them. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Fast forward to like 2009, I was working at Sylvania. I got strep throat and conjunctivitis, and I knew I was going to be stuck in bed for three days. And I had watched Friday the 13th and Halloween about a thousand times over two days. And my wife comes home and she goes, Hey, I was at Walmart and look what they have. And it was the Nightmare on Elm Street anthology. And I was like, Fuck yeah. I put it in. I watched the first one, and I'm just like, hmm. All right. Yeah, all right. I get to see Johnny Depp die. That's Johnny a plus. Depp. Yep. yep. Dope. Be okay. Blow. And then I watched the second one. And as I'm watching the second one, I'm falling asleep. And I'm just like, all right, this is kind of silly. And I managed to make it through the second one. And then the third one, I'm like this. And I think I watched about an hour of it. And then I'm like, all right, the third one sucked. And I put the fourth one in. And the fourth one sucked. And the fifth one sucked. And the fourth and one made the most money. And it's the one that's really with the franchise. You talk about that's, taking that's the Dream Warriors. Is that Dream Warriors? No, four is... Dream Master. Dream Master, okay. Dream you have Dream everything, right? But Dream the one Warriors. Had the ter- three with Doc. Yep. And Doc and did the and, soundtrack and, and to it. And that made it even worse that you had to listen to Doc while you were watching a bad movie. 
I was craving something different yeah. when I saw but that shit. Re- trying to rewatch those as an adult, I was just like, man, these are so bad. I don't know how I enjoyed these as a kid. I just, they didn't, as a kid, I loved them. I absolutely loved them. And I think that this was the franchise that brought that, that campiness because every time Freddy had a kill, he had like a, he had that wisecrack saying right before he killed somebody with and every, every kill. And everyone had to die. Um, I'll give a perfect example. I think this was part four. The girl who was like the model. Yep. So she had to watch what she eats. So we force feed her. Yes. That, yeah. yeah. There was a, something to do with like some kind of not sin. Not a sin. It's the right. seven but, deadly sins. Yeah. The but, gluttony and, and the and the and the yeah. and the and the AIDS. Yeah. And and the, there was one where the girl was trying to be the actor, the actress, and he killed her with the TV. He's like, "You finally made it to yeah. prime time, bitch!" And then yeah. he smashes the TV overhead. Right. And I'm like, as a kid, I was like, "Ah, it was great." Yeah. And as an adult, I'm watching it, and I'm just like, "That's." Dude. That's yeah, it's dumb. That's about I, as I dumb as it gets. West Craven, though, he did in in a genre that was kind of fading out yes. by 1985. Yep, he did bring it back. He, he did something that no one saw coming. He yep. resurrected it. Yeah, and, and he did it again because he the Scream franchise, which we're going to talk about as well. Yep. You, you know, so he kind of he completely reinvented it with that franchise, but with this. With the night now, I'm, I'm going to say this, and a lot of people are probably going to say it's blasphemous. The because I know a lot of people hated it was the remake that they did, the reboot of Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, I watched it once. I've never watched that. Again. See, I actually thought it was it, it was as good as the original. I never saw it. I, I, if, gonna... if I'm correct, is that the movie where maybe he wasn't molesting kids and he was wrongly accused? Yes. Oh, the Larry uh, Nassa yeah, story. I, I, I'm, yep. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> The storyline wasn't great, but the acting in that movie and the cinematography, and it was creepy uh, compared to two. I mean, if you think it's better than four and five, at least, can you give me that? Or you just think it's that bad. Jerry Sandusky uh, was in it? I'll <laughs> take Robert England in the worst. Oh, okay. that's right. It's Robert and, England. And, 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 I thought it was the Crocodile and, Hunter. And, and, and right. I would, isn't, isn't the kid from Bad News Bears, Kelly Leak? Yep. Isn't he the new Freddy? Yes, he is. Yeah. Yep. That's what I thought. So I, wow. I will give you that. It's definitely different, and that's the, that's they the one thing. They grow up so fast. The, the Halloween franchise and the Friday the 13th franchise, you had a different guy playing the killer in most of those movies. And in Halloween, it really didn't matter because it was a guy in a mask. They could have had a girl. And in fact, Deborah Hill was the, the shape in some of yeah. the scenes, so they did actually have a girl playing Michael Myers in some of the scenes. But the, the person who was playing those characters really didn't matter because they were wearing a mask. But... It's like me and Line of Shaw's Robert today. Englund. Yeah, Fr- Freddy Krueger was Robert Eng- uh, was Robert Englund through all the movies, and that made him so recognizable. Right. Yeah. And the, the new guy, it definitely takes away from it. But I, I actually, I, I enjoyed little, little the little Tommy Doyle looking through the shades. Yes. Across the streets, that's her. That, that's Deborah Hill. Yep, standing and that's out her there. Man. Oh, yep. that's who she is. Because yep. he now looks like uh, he reminds me of the singer from Alice in Chains. Yeah. <laughs> what he probably looks like. Probably when looks they like found him. about right about now too. Oof. Yeah, so I'm not going to get into all the individual movies in here. I'm just going to say. Okay, um, well, what, what about New they're, Nightmare? They're, well, that's what I'm talking about. That's the re- that's the reboot. That wasn't that the new Nightmare? No, 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 no. The oh. reboot with Kelly Leak was just a Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. New Nightmare was when Wes Craven came back in the '90s. I've never seen it. I didn't know that it even existed. That's almost shameful. Uh, I guess. Pause the show. We got to go inside so, and watch a movie. So, I think we ended. With, it ends with Freddy's dead. Okay, that mm-hmm. was the last. Okay. Yep. So one of the one services. Of the 90s, 1998, maybe. Wes Craven comes back with a movie called New Nightmare, with the original cast of Nightmare on Elm Street playing themselves. Like Nancy is Heather. Um, her name escapes me. Yep. Plays herself as Thomas. Actress, being stalked by somebody. She calls Robert England. She's talking to him. She's going on interviews and shows. It's about her, and. It's good. <laughs> I, I like the story and I like what they're doing. It sounds it sounds they're interesting. They're taking fantasy and reality and blending, mixing it, which yep. she's great at. Okay, absolutely. I don't want to give too much away because you never. I can't no. believe you've never seen it. I've this. never seen it. No. Now there's a lot of CGI in it. Okay. You can yeah. believe I've never CGI seen it. CGI it's, and it's bad. Ooh, it's... But if you can just get past that, is it Indiana then... Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull bad at CGI or is it worse? Because that might be the worst CGI ever in a movie, Steven it, it Spielberg. Might, might, that's a very long <laughs> title. Listen, go in with an open mind. And just okay. go, I know the CGI is bad. And please, tell me what you think, because it's 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 Wes doing what he does best. Okay. He's, he's, when people said Freddy's not scary anymore, I saw this in the theater. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of the stuff with Freddy Krueger, we were back to the original. It was actually 
but then it was scary. Yes. I don't know. I'm not yep. going to say that you're going to you know, be pulling the shit over your... So bad CGI. Bob, Bob Thunder agrees with you. He says bad, bad CGI. CGI. Yep. Yeah, Bob, Bob agrees. And it's really too bad because it's a decent CGI. Okay, so Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Great Ramon song. Yeah, so this is one... It's my take. The original, I liked, yeah, but awesome. for a movie that's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there's zero blood. And how do you have zero blood in a movie called Texas Chainsaw Massacre? And I know a lot of it was because they, they couldn't, they didn't I, want to get I think worse the, than an I R rating. Think the mood in the guerrilla filmmaking yes. made that whole movie. I still, to this day, find that movie unnerving. Yep. scared. Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's, to me, when, you, when you're when you smacking someone on the head with a big hammer like that, yep. that's more terrifying than a chainsaw. Watching somebody on the ground, yep. exactly. That's, yep. that's more scary to me than that a chainsaw. That would disturb the shit out of me. Yes. And, um, the, and so, I, by the way, I love it, yeah. but I'm just like, where's the blood? It's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Where's the blood? But a, a lot of that was because when they originally filmed it with a lot of the blood in it, they said, were well, you going to get an X rating because of, oh, it was too gory, yeah. so they had to dial it way back so that they only got an hour. We're going to go back to unnerving again. They cut the girl's finger and let Grandpa suck the blood out of it. Yes. There's a lot of stuff in that that's disturbing. Very disturbing. I never yeah. thought to do that. And they, were, and they were, at the end, when they were holding her down and they were having Grandpa try and hit her in the head with the hammer and oh, he, yeah. he couldn't do it over oh, and over again. Grandpa really, sounds like a character. Really creepy, creepy. Absolutely loved it. Now, the king of all campy horror movies is part two. I love part I like it, but you can't say it's not campy. No, it, you know what? Toby Hooper is a great filmmaker, and he's definitely somebody who Good doesn't name. try to recreate what he already did. Yep. He was given a lot of money for that movie. I think that Hollywood, because Hollywood said, go crazy. We don't care what you do. We yep. trust you. Yep. Which I'm sure that they ate those words. Yes, they ate those words, especially they in the beginning. Because they a ton of money, and I think they were a little put off when, by what when, they got. When they cut the guy's head in half on the uh, driving in the convertible in the beginning yes. and the blood's all spurting out of it. Yes, I think they were, were like, wait a minute. I know we said to do whatever you want to do, but... I Brent. like that movie because, again, I went in there with expectations of the Chainsaw Massacre. Yep. And I thought, wow, this is going to be great. It's Toby Hooper. It's this. And I remember the movie ending and I'm going... My mouth just, I gave. Um, and, but I really like it. There's something about that movie that it's kind of tongue in cheek. Yep. It's very, yes, this is the Sawyer family, and what would they be doing now? I don't know. Making chili and serving it to people with the uh, human remains in it. I think it's funny they named, I think we touched on this uh, on our movie episode a couple of weeks ago. Saw Sawyer Law Lawyer. They named the family after what they do. Yes. But, so... That went nowhere. And, and uh, <laughs> it's okay. I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out how to work with it. But you, you also know that in the Texas Chainsaw, there's actually two completely separate franchises. You have the Hewitt family. And a Chick-fil-A. And, and you have the Soy. And by the way, you're going to hate me because I like the Hewitt family better. I think it's a better, those are the better movies. That... Remake-wise, yes. was excellent. Oh, I love it. Let me say why. Because, because you get to see Jessica Biel's ass in a tight pair of jeans. If they That's had, why. If they had tried to recreate the realness of yep. the first movie, they would have failed the, miserably. I agree. So they did. They made it a movie. Yes. Okay, like, like, in other words, here's the story of this family. And hey, by the way, it's a real thing. It was excellent. Yep. I don't know so much about the sequel to that. Oh, so, so the 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 beginning, the first, so when they went and did the the prequel of it. See, I like them both. See, it reminds me of Mike Myers on Saturday Night Live with his with his coffee talk character, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was neither in Texas nor chainsaws nor a massacre. <laughs> uh, now three. How do you have uh, a massacre oh, movie with no blood? Is to me, one of the worst oh, of all time. Yeah, so, and I don't care who's in it. Matthew McConaughey yeah, and, and uh, Renee Zellweger. Uh, oh. Terrible. Yeah, they, Ant so, Face. Yep. Yeah. Anteater face? Yes. I'm surprised that Matthew McConaughey worked after that. Um, that that was absolutely, and that was the one where, was that the one where he was a cross-dresser where he was putting on makeup at the end? No, that was a picture of oh, me no, that I that's shared. The, uh, that's, um, hold on, it's right over here. Oh. Yeah, that's that, that, yeah that, you can even see it, the next generation. Yeah. That was so fucking bad. Oh, my God. That, everything about that movie was the, terrible. The original writer wrote that. Oh. That looks like original Texas Dildo writer. Massacre from where I'm sitting. Mm. Seriously, I, it, the monitor is yep. very big, but... Uh, the, the one with the lips? Is so that what we're talking about? What, what, what about what the, you're talking about dildos again? Oh, you should have seen. Did you bring yours? No. You know what? <laughs> it's funny you fucking bring that up. 
I was going to tear my house apart the other day looking for my golden butt plug. <laughs> I just didn't have it in me. <laughs> what were we talking about today? Exactly. <laughs> golden butt plug. Horror. Apparently. This is real horror, so, folks. Real life. What did you think about uh, the Texas Chainsaw 3D, other than it was stupid that it was in 3D? Good, solid attempt. Yep. I like the opening again. Another Bob one trying Latendo. to erase everything that came after. And we're yep. going to go back to this. That was, it was, and I think the opening was the best thing about it. Yes. I thought that movie built everything up really good. When the the guy that was robbing the house, when he went down yeah. and he opened up the door and he got up until that point in the movie, I thought it was fantastic. But everything that happened after that, I just was like, "Come on!" Yeah. It just it got really goofy. I bought that for five dollars at Walmart. Just yeah, it was five dollars. I was gonna say, I think you, I, I think Walmart owes you four bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Buy and bin. It was it was bad. And then Leatherface. I hate it. I never saw it. And that that's that's a prequel where they're trying to go back and show you how he became who he was. The only uh, the only thing I'm gonna say that I liked about that was in the beginning. I thought that you know the beginning part of it where they show how he got taken away and put in the mental institution. I'm like, okay, had story nothing to do with any of the stories ever. You never heard any of that about him. And then when he was in the mental institution and they had the the three guys that escaped, trying to figure out which one of it was. I think that was the only part of it that kept me watching was I was like, which guy is of the three is going to end up being Leatherface? And it's the, the least... It, if once they escape and they're out in the car and you go, if you pause the movie and say, which one of the three is it, you're going to guess wrong. Everybody's going to guess wrong. It's the one kid that you would say, yeah, it's not, definitely not him. It's one of these two. It's the kid that you don't think it is. It's always the quiet ones. But it was just... Everything else about that movie was dumb. Didn't like it. Didn't think it did uh, justice. And I... I a lot of times, I have to watch a movie two and three times to really appreciate it. I've watched that probably four or five times, and I really? like it. I did like you it less. Once I, never I, I like it less every time. Did I you watch say it. everything about that movie was dumb, or everything about that movie was dope? It dumb. sounded dumb. to me like you said everything about that movie was dumb. dope. I was dumb. like, dumb. who is this guy? Dumb, 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 dumb. <laughs> nope, you will never hear me say dope ever in my life. All right, that's Welcome sex, back to the Shrek and Elvis show, oh, everybody. Enough. All right, so from Chainsaw to Saw. Now, you can argue. Is this a horror movie? Good this question. Falls on a torture porn. A, and that which, is a whole which is a whole subgenre. So I would agree with you. I think there's definitely some creepiness to it, but is it really horror? No, I think that this and Hostel were movies that were more torture porn, and they weren't horror movies. Okay. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I want to say this about: I'm a very big defender of Hostel. No. Okay. Both, both the first two movies. Get and the hell out of here. That's, uh, Eli Roth, who I think is an amazing filmmaker. Yep. Uh, if you've ever listened to him talk and you're an aspiring filmmaker, he is the guy to listen to because this guy, I think he grew up in Malvern, and um, he... He did. He wanted this so badly. Like me. He did everything to get where he is. Yep. Including, like, these Kickstarters, you know. Rode the arms line. To me, and I know, and I feel bad because this is... People always refer back to him when they talk about that subgenre of torture. Yep. I find those movies, that was the first time in a long time I actually walked away scared. Disturbed. To me, that was something that you go to these other countries where vulnerable. stuff like this goes on. Yeah, yeah. vulnerable. That to me was scary. I was like, this is something that I could see happening. Yeah. And it was bothersome. Uh, the second movie was genius because they focused on the type of people who joined these clubs. Exactly. Yeah. It was great. Yep. Oh, good, good so angle. I, the thing with Saw. I think I don't think I ever get past four. I will say this: the, I thought the first saw was awesome. Yes. I, I loved everything about it. It was very clever, and it made you think throughout the whole movie. The second one, they got away from that a little bit, but it was still that kind of. It was almost like 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 playing Clue. It was like that who done it? You're trying to figure out who it was. Once you knew who it was and what he was doing, it was basically three, four, five, six, however many movies they made were just copy pastes of the same thing. You That's knew who was doing it. You knew why he was doing it. And it was just more of the same of the first movie. I still liked them just because I'm into weird shit like that. But the first two I thought were really well done. And then everything after that was copy paste and just pretty much more of the same. Of all the saws I never saw, I never saw, 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 saw. 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 You never saw, saw? Never saw, saw. No, nope. you're missing out. I fell away from those movies. Um, yep. I, I think that I didn't the, see those Saw. sequels 
are more the torture porn everyone talks about, yep. even though Hostel gets blamed for it. Um, I, 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 I think feel the same way about, and these movies have always been in the horror section of your video stories, if you're old enough to remember those, but is rape revenge movies. Yes, yep. I never I understood spit on why grave. those movies were in the horror section, because those, to me, although it's a horrific thing, yep. uh, that's not enjoyable to me to watch. No. Spit grave is a, a, it's a, not entertainment. a horrible film. Um, and what's horrible about it, so they, they actually remade the movie, so there's the original that they I've made, never, never saw and then they remade it, and then they did a part two, and it's just like, it is, it, like you said, it, it's a, a very tough watch it's to watch like that the movie. the original Last House on the Left, I feel the same way about it. Yep, yep, absolutely, now, and they you, remade that I'm one. I'm going to tell you a movie uh, that I saw along this. I didn't mean to get off subject. No, no, keep going. Saw. Uh, this, the movie Revenge, have you seen that? I don't think so. Again... A rape revenge movie, but the actual act there's it's enough that you know something terrible happened, but it's not like I spit in the grave where you have the next the next forty minutes is going to be a rape scene. Okay, so, so oh. to to take on that, um, what was a movie that they just remade there with it was Charles Bronson Death Wish. Death Wish 2, he rapes his daughter in the beginning and then he goes and he kills everybody. Oh. And that was not, like, like, I Spit on Your Grave was, like, the first, like, 45 minutes of the movie is them torturing and raping this girl. I Spit on Your Grave is the same thing. Yes. With uh, with Death Wish, it's, like, a five-minute part of the yes. movie and it amps you up to and, root and, for and him and make you, you right want now, to. Death Wish 2, those scenes are a thousand times worse than this movie I'm talking about. Yep. I, the movie I'm talking about... The, the, and it's called let's, Revenge? Let's, let's, it's called Revenge. Let's say this. Let's say it's forty seconds, maybe a little longer. Okay. It's very uncomfortable, very realistic, and you 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 get it. This is this is this is not for anyone's enjoyment. It's then followed by one of those suspension of disbelief when it comes to revenge. And I'm telling you right now, you can't stop watching this movie. It's her onslaught of revenge is fantastic. It's it's really well done, and I'm not a fan of these movies. And I and I saw this, and only kept watching because again, you needed to see what was going to happen. Next. Yep. So, when you talk about revenge movies, I like Death Wish. You know, the first couple. Yep. Um, Law Abiding Citizen. Have you seen it? No. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, but dude, that's that, uh, that Toy just, Story two. That was no. a great. They they <laughs> fucking got right back. No, and no, Sid. no, no Toy Story. Awesome. When they go to college and get rid of the toys. So uh, that yeah. was a uh, four, and <laughs> they right, all so, cried, so, and I cried, now, and you cried. Here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an argument here on both sides. Make Alien, your argument. The Alien franchise. Yeah. It is a, it is a horror movie. Mm -hmm. It is not a horror movie. And I, I like and the I, dichotomy. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to tell you why it's not a horror movie. Sci-fi. Okay, but sci-fi sci can still be horror. No, so and, it's, it's sci-fi yeah. horror. But I will say, the first Alien movie, Alien 1, first one, Sigourney Weaver in space, I think that if, if you just say the premise of the movie, they're being stalked and they're being killed one by it's one. It's a remake of it, Terror from Space. Yep. So, but, so you, you say, okay, so it's a horror movie that takes place in space. Okay, well, if that same movie took place on Earth, it would still be a horror movie, right? Location, location, location. Wrong. That would make Predator a horror movie, and Predator is not a horror movie. Great point. It's Holy the same. What's the difference shit. between Predator and Alien? One takes place in a jungle on Earth. One takes place in a space station. It's both an alien creature that's hunting people down and stalking and killing them. I think them. the other difference, though, is when you put on a Schwarzenegger on action style. <laughs> True. You change it. Yeah. If you put on a Schwarzenegger and... and uh, my mother's and that underwear. Ship, an alien, it's still a hot shit. It'd be a whole different movie. Get to the escape pod <laughs> now! Do it! Come on! I'm here. Let me tell you something about Alien. Ah. I saw Alien when I was. Um, but all right, so is it a horror movie? To me, yes. I'm gonna okay. tell you why. All right. This is my story. I, by the way, I agree with you. I saw that in the theater. My mother and um, my cousin Sharon, uh, on my father's side, we all went. Three of us. Now it's 1979. Okay. There's never been a movie like this. Mm -hmm. When that scene happened with the chest burster, yes, I didn't know what to do with myself. I think I was grabbing the seat, and you, and you, you stopped I doing this. I couldn't stop watching the film, and, and you hadn't learned to think of was masturbate what yet. What's going to happen next? I, I was terrified. And it screams at you and runs off, and you just like my first girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I loved showing that movie to my kids. Who had never didn't know anything about it, had never seen it, and watching them when that scene happens. So uh, uh, to, to to give you a little bit of you know we talked about sign of the times. I watched watched that movie with my kids, and when the chest burst scene happened, they were like, 
yeah! And I was just like, I raised him right. Whew, all right. <laughs> but I was with you when I first saw it. I remember watching it with my, and my father, we were watching it. Nope, uh, I, you know what, you know, you know what movie I got to see in the theater when I was a kid? Grease. It's the word. And, uh, Greece and, uh, and, and yeah, yes, there is. And, and Star Wars. My father and my mother did not like horror movies. I didn't get to go to horror movies until I was probably like twelve or thirteen years old. My mom is a huge horror. Movie. And my friend Rich Donahue, Dickie Donahue, his father would take us to Revere Cinema. He would go in and buy two tickets to the horror movie, give them to us, give us five bucks each, and then he would leave. And then we would go into the movie and watch awesome. the movies. My my mom was a is a huge horror movie fan, and I'm going to tell you a funny story that she regretted. She took me and my good friend Danny to see American Werewolf in London. Have you ever seen the movie? American Werewolf in London? Oh, I, I watched that. Uh, I was being babysat. I have I, not. I was being babysat by my cousins in Winthrop. My parents dropped me off. Do you remember and, the scene and, and, where, the, where the nurse takes a shower and then ends up with the guy in bed? Uh, it might have been edited for television, Boy, but... Did my mother wish she... You actually look like the guy. I, if, you had, if you had a big <laughs> well, head of that, curly hair, the, you look like the star of that movie. I forget his name. That, that was... Um, I remember that movie. The, the, the Shining. A little, little preface here. When the, in the, the part where the woman gets up and she's naked and yeah, gets out of the mom, tub and walks mom, up. My mom took me to see that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. See, I, I didn't yeah. get to see it in the theater, but I, I, see I got to see it on it HBO. And my mother and my father made me read The Shining before he would let me watch the movie. And I remember when the movie was coming on, my father kept coming in the room and watching to see where it was. And then he would leave and he would come back in. And then all of a sudden, my dad's standing on one side of me. My mom's standing on the other side. And I'm watching... And he goes into room 213, and he goes in, and he fucking turns around. My mother's like, and I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, you can't watch this pot. Uh -huh. so, so I'm like watching between her fingers like this. I'm like, tits? Uh, she needs to shave that bush. <laughs> Holy shit. What is she got, a beaver and a head scissors? Oh, I Jesus thought you were Christ. talking about your mother. Hold on. <laughs> oh I hope Adele's not watching because she's coming oh. here on Tuesday, and she'll kick your ass. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm sorry. I mean, Holy wait hell. Yeah, okay, yeah, wait, wait a second away from me. Oh, okay, so. Segue away. A A Aliens, I, I would say that it, it kind of it's not your traditional horror movie, but I still think that it falls under horror. The second movie is an action film. Yes, oh, definitely, and, that, and that's just fantastic. it. I love it. I think the set. I enjoy. I think the first, and this is weird to say. I think the first movie is a better movie, but I enjoy the second one more. Bill Paxton makes the movie. I think Bill Paxton's yes. character is just absolutely yes. awesome. He's, he's the same yes, guy in every, in every film movie. that he's in. Yeah. He's the exact same yeah. guy. That's it, man. That's Who all he wasted, is man. in every movie he's not that the guy he. You want. <laughs> yes. Oh my God! I, mean, I wouldn't I want him. I know he's you dead, to... and I'm sorry for that. He died way too young. Yep. But I wouldn't want him as an elevator operator. <laughs> you know, it would be like uh, <clears throat> you're on but, the but, second floor now. But you know what? You need to take Paul Reiser and him and put him in the other room, and then the rest <laughs> of us will fight the aliens. <laughs> Paul Reiser though is is was cast perfectly. And he nails that character because oh. he's just that sleazy, yes. scumbag, corporate couldn't, stooge. Couldn't that you, and, and you hate him. You absolutely hate his character in the movie, and that's how you know how he was cast right. He's you like, just, uh, what's you, the guy these days? Um, the guy... John Daly? Yeah, well, yeah. Co-host of Moose and Squirrel? Him, too. The, yes. Uh, the, uh, uh, the guy that everybody hates. He was on Entourage, and he sucks. And... Uh, Ah, forget it. Oh, Jeremy mind. Piven? Yes! Yeah, there you go. Holy yes. pull. Uh, yep. That was a good one. There you go. It's, by the way, you know how much of Entourage I've seen? None. No, I haven't I either. I just know that he's in it. I just know that he was in it, and guy. everyone yeah. hates him. That, that's the one. Every uh, uh, yep. the, the other guy you were talking about. Bill everyone, Paxton. Yep. Bill, uh, yeah. The, oh, no, Paul Reiser's character. Paul Reiser's character, yep. Reminded me of Jerry, Jeremy Piven, Piven in real life. Yeah, it's just everybody hates him. But <clears throat> the other Alien movies... Three cool. and four, digging into beer too. All right. Everyone okay, thinks great. I'm Sorry. cool, I, I but this thing is yes. a little cooler. So, yeah, right? Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Yeah, I don't speak Greek. I, those were like the prequels where they were kind of showing where the aliens came from. To me, they're not alien movies. I mean, I put them on here because they're um, still supposed to be part of the franchise, showing you where again, it came this from. Is, this is going back to the original film, and, and this is the uh, this is the nine year old that sat there watching it. When that thing was in the big gun chair, and you could see where something had come out of its chest, yep. the very opening of Alien. Yes. I left the theater that day going, what were those guys all about? Yes. I wanted more, and that's That brings you back to it. Movies. So yep. I really enjoyed them. I understand a lot of people walked away saying that was very convoluted and hard to understand. It is very hard to understand. Yes. I had to watch them a couple times. Yep. But I think the more you, the more you watch them and, and try to wrap your head around it, 
Yeah, it's very convoluted, but it's it, the story is better than the movie. Yes, absolutely. And I like the movies, but I have a, just like you said, I have a hard time other than the you see in the guy with his chest exploded sitting in the the, the the seat of the thing. Other than that, it gives you a really they take way, they take two movies to tell you how the aliens came about, the the, uh, the xenomorphs come about. It takes like two movies for you to completely understand and say, hey, you could have done it in like 15 minutes. You didn't need two movies to do it. You could have done, they could have done a better job. They're both still great movies. I'll watch them both. Yeah. But I just, I'm just like, mm, a little uh, bit then, takes too long. Was, oh yeah. AVP, Alien vs. Predator. I didn't put those on here because I said Predator is not a horror movie, so I excluded right, those. No, they're definitely, and there's actually, High expectations. you know, there's actually two of them. There's Alien vs. Predator and then both. Alien vs. Predator they Requiem. Were, they were comic books. Yes. And the comics were great. Yep. And I, so I had very high expectations and was very well done. And they were both very bad. Very, very, very bad. All right, so let's go to the next here. So I, I, I put up Dawn of the Dead. I put up the original and the remake. But any of these George Romero, Return of the Night of the Living Dead, Night of the Living Dead, any of those movies, that whole genre of zombie movies, George Romero, I love almost all of them. There are some that are kind of bad. If I were to tell someone who's never seen any of them, the original trilogy, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Yes. Stop. Yep. Now, that being said, that remake, the remake. back to good remakes, that's fantastic. That is absolutely phenomenal. I yeah. loved that. And I had very low expectations, and that was one. And Dawn's my favorite. <coughs> the original. Yep. And they still, it's on par. I, I liked the original. And when it came on, it was HBO, it was on cable, whatever, whatever channel it was on. And it came on, and I'm like, this is going to be so bad. But I was homesick, and I was just like, I'll put it on. Let's see how long it lasts. And as soon as the movie was over, I said, hey, if you stop at Walmart on your way home, can you see if they have Dawn of the Dead on DVD? I liked it that much that I went out and I bought it. And I think I actually think she threw the DVD away once because I legitimately would watch that movie like once a week. I loved it. I thought it was so good. They had decent actors, decent I, characters. I am, I am more of a fan of, of the original. Now, this, this, and again, this goes back to, you have to remember when you were in an age, you just couldn't readily see this stuff. Yep. You couldn't go to the, couldn't go to the film, or maybe you were too young. Especially Dawn of the Dead was unrated, which is like rating an S. Right, so, yep. And you had magazines like uh, Famous Monsters of Filmland, Fangoria. Yep, mm -hmm. Fangoria. I, I used this to, was yeah. your access because no internet. So this mm -hmm. was your access to see photos and of these movies you couldn't see. And totally fascinated with Dawn of the Dead before I actually got to see it. And it, it held up to everything those pictures promised. So what did you think of Return of the Night of the Living Dead? I don't know. Oh, you mean Return of the Living Dead. Re is it Return of the Living Dead? Is that what it's called? That's the one where they, they find the, the two I barrels in there. I thought it was a the... very clever yep. story. Yep. Very clever, and it was fun, and it's a comedy. I agree. It's 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 almost you almost want to say it's a spoof because it's yeah. kind of goofy, especially but with the big slimy story. thing. He's like, brains. Oh, they incorporate the original film and say, yes. hey, you know that was a true story. I love that. Yes, yeah. That's campfire right there. And, and that, <laughs> I absolutely that was one that I really enjoyed, but it was definitely goofy and yes. silly. I hated the sequel to it. Yes. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> now, speaking of and, sequels, and speaking of Tommy Jarvis. Yep, he he's was in that movie. Yep, yes. absolutely. Yep, he's with the guy that uh, the two guys that find him originally. This is built by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. <laughs> um, speaking of sequels, uh, Day of the Dead, the remake to the remake of, or the sequel to the remake of Dawn of the Dead, don't. Uh, I'm sorry, no, no, I'm sorry. It was, it was Land, Land of the Dead. Land of the Dead is what I'm talking about. I like that. You like Land of the Dead? No, wait. Preface this by saying, I said the original three, my favorite. Yes. But I like that better than a lot of other stuff that's out I would, it's probably the last good film Romero made. Yeah, it, it's it's watchable. Yeah. But I just think, yeah. Uh, is he dead? Yeah. George Romero's uh -huh. dead. Yes. I, you know, John Leguizamo's in that one, and uh, Dennis Hopper is in that have one. Have you ever seen Martin? I have not. Martin Lawrence is a vampire story. Oh. Romero. Yep. Um, very slow burn, but it's about a kid who believes he is a, a like five hundred year old vampire. And it's one of those films where it's left to the viewer to decide, was this all in his head? Is there something wrong with him? Or is he really a 500-year-old vampire? It's definitely worth a watch. I'm not saying you're going to walk away from it and go, wow, it was a, a Romero classic. It was gold. It was No. But, I, I but it's interesting. It. It. Br Brendan said Alien versus Predator was funny to watch. I would agree. It was kind of goofy. And you know, I don't remember anything <clears throat> either of those. You know what I remember? They're Tommy bad. Z. They're bad. 
All right, so we move on from George Romero. Yep. Scream. Oh, we talk about here we go. Raven. All right, so. First one was genius. Uh, the first one I thought was absolutely brilliant. The twist at the end of the movie. It was it fun. It kept you guessing through the whole movie. Yeah, Drew Barrymore is sexy as hell. And the acting was fantastic. And she to my it. knowledge, it was the first one where you had a serial killer where you had two people working in conjunction. Yes. I don't know anyone. And that was like the biggest spin. It's not one guy. It's two guys. And I want to, I want to point something out. Yep. The murder in the, in the beginning of the film. As a, there's a bunch, there's so much I like about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is all pure Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Her putting the Jiffy Puff. Yes. Which is your time clock. Yep. That you're watching. Yep. Love that. Love the fact that this goes from uh, fun, mm -hmm. you know, the questions about the horror yep. movies, goes from fun to real serious, real fast. Real quick. And when she's murdered, for the first time in a long time, it's tough watch her on yes. the phone with the parents and she's being killed that, yeah yeah that, yep. really? that the, was the, the that was disturbing sees her hanging in the tree oh, yeah yep. that was just, and it was unexpected too and that behind the scene photos of that shot yep. that it looked even more disturbing now yeah, that was really I, I, I was just gonna say you know that originally when they, when they put it out to have it You're the a movie rated when they brought it out to have the movie rated they made them cut that scene way back and that's why when the father walks out and she's hanging in the tree and they do that shaky zoom all yeah. the way up to it yeah. They had to do that because they, if you if you pause it at one point and get a good catch of it, she's actually cut across her abdomen and her guts are hanging out in the tree, oh! which you really can't see when no. they do that shaky you see zoom in. in. The behind the scene photo, yeah, you can so. see him in the behind, and she's literally got her entrails hanging out of her, oh. hanging in the tree. Can can you see and Nip? They said, uh, can you see Nip? Maybe through. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just gonna say you might be able to see it through the sweater if you zoom in a little oh, bit. All but, right. I thought but, you were going there. So that was he made, went like overboard with the gore, and they said, oh. you can, "Yeah, you got to back that." It's the nineties there. Yes. Now, face. I'm gonna tell you, Scream Two. I love the opening. Yep. I love the movie about. Yep. What happened. The stab, stab. People in the theater. Yep. It's a very long opening. Let's yes. go back to Scream. I think that's the best thing of Part Two. Let's go yep. back to Scream, uh, the original. I have to say, the end. The two guys cutting each other in the kitchen yep. at the very end isn't it strange how it normalizes like like if right now if i cut you on the arm you'd be like what the fuck just happened oh my god i got a fucking i, I need a band-aid i need a surgeon i need some stitches i need john you needs know, a dentist i need a dentist <laughs> you these guys are just cutting each other and they don't care yeah it, it normalizes it and i found that strange yes it, that, i was like it just shows or, you how nuts the two that's of them were. That, yeah. Which one of those actors is the one that went on? To Skeet Ulrich. Oh, oh, uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know his he name. He was on he's Law and Order. Order. He says, it's a scream, baby. Maybe. It was improvised. Yes, yep, that was and improvised. that actually summed up the title of the film. That's I mean, awesome. That all yep. Yeah. And so, he's, love he's the first a great one. actor. I thought the second one was okay, but... Brendan Bean will know who he is. And then the, the third and the fourth one, I was just like, it's it, you you basically just, you know, living off of the franchise name the, the and just. Third did what most sequels try to do. It tried to take bring you back to connect it to the original. Yep. Good effort. I'm not gonna say it's terrible. Good effort. Yep. Four, I, I actually own and saw and don't remember. No, nope, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty forgettable. Know what that was about. I could not. It's pretty it. forgettable. I think that's the one of the of those four movies. That's the only one that I only watched and once. A new one coming. Yes. Yep. But I know nothing about it. And the new one that's coming out is supposed to be part of a trilogy. They're trying to go on. Every, everything's a trilogy now. And they're saying, hey, we're going to put out the first one, and there's two more stories right behind it. So they're going to kind of try to wrap that back up, and I don't know where they're going to go with it. But Wes Craven, the first one I thought was absolutely fantastic. But I'm gonna that's a totally why, different show. I'm going to tell you why I Those hate. are the two broads from England. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you why I hate the screen movies, and that is because of this. Because it brought you garbage like this, Final Destination. Oh, who doesn't love a plane nope. crash? Don't. Do it, so it's all. Su there's no killer in it. It's death. Death is killing everybody. People escape death, and then death comes back to to, to get them. And you needed five movies about that. No, it was dumb the first time. I, I hate when they're. I hate sometimes admitting because I'm a huge horror movie fan, yep. and I try to see everything. You are. So, but sometimes I wouldn't know there, for whatever reason. There's some I just go, eh, yeah, and I yeah. don't even bother. And that's one and, of them. And, and 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 there's another one. I know what you did last summer. Uh, uh, this movie, I can when I see this title, I can only think of two things. Boobs. Is it? What's her name? 
the Hewitts, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the Hewitts Hewitt. and the Sawyers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, knew, I knew he was going to mention that. Yeah. But you know what? I saw the original one, and yeah. I was happy to see an attempt to go back to the slasher. The slasher, yep. But it's not to say that I thought it was great. I remember at the time liking it because I, I liked that we were coming back to that. Yep. Never saw the third. Don't remember the second. No. It, you're getting killed by the Gorton fisherman. I mean, you're getting killed by the fish stick <laughs> man. <laughs> or you're getting killed by the, uh, the the New York Islanders' terrible jerseys where they have the Gorton's fishermen on well, their jerseys. The oldest in the world, the hook. Yep. Yep. Old camp yep. Yep. Bill Murray told them. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And it just, oh. I Scream brought you these movies because it was that teenager kind of. H2O. Yeah, it, Back to it, that. It, it, and that's just, those movies, all of them, I, I've seen every one of them once and every, uh, duh, just dumb. You just, you were hoping for them to be more. Yep. And they just, they failed miserably. All I remember. H2O, at one point on the television, Scream is on. Right? Yep. Yep. All Which I remember. What doesn't make sense about that is they reference Halloween in those movies. Well, See where I'm going with this? It happens yes. once a year. It doesn't make sense. It's no, kind of. It doesn't. All I remember is so, Jennifer Loves Hewitt's. Yes. All right. The Shining. Ah, boom. Here you go. Sorry, 1980 with my Classic. mom. Classic. Yeah. She took me. Um, oh, what a nice book. This mom. is a story I've told many times. I thought about that movie for weeks to the point where I actually said to my mom, I said, I'm still thinking about that movie. Yeah, M- M- Matthew Lillard was uh, Stuart from Scream. He was a guy that went on to become yep. Shaggy. Right. Played a great character in Law and Order opposite uh, uh, Carol... Uh, Something. Car- Car- yeah, the, she had her own show. I, I didn't watch Law and Order. Classic actress. What's her name? No idea. Carol Burnett. Burnett. <laughs> yes, that's her. <laughs> Boom. So I, I told right, her, the I, I said, I'm still thinking about this movie. And she told me at the tender uh, age of 10, uh, that's the sign of a great movie. When you are still processing it yep. and still trying to Hostile. wrap your head around it, yep. uh, that's the sign of a great movie. And yep. I, to this day, I, stand, I hope you're going to say you like this movie. I love it. It's one of my all-time favorites. Some say Mark and is still thinking I about it to this, this day. As far as horror movies go, it's a slow burn. You have to be patient with it because yeah. it's an hour and a half into the movie and you're just like, nobody's dead. Uh, what the fuck's <laughs> going on? So it's a, it's a really slow burn mm-hmm. to Even watch him go did, crazy. It didn't matter to me because but, I was captivated yeah, by but, I mean, yeah, But most horror movies, you get that, that splash right in the beginning where there's a kill immediately in the movie and then it kind of goes away and then it starts bringing up and there's a kill here and then it comes up and there's a kill here. This movie, and there's only... Two people that die in the movie, right? There's, yeah. there's uh, the, the 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 black cook that gets whacked in the chest with the axe, and, and then, then he freezes to death at the end. Yeah. And the other so guy. there's only two people that die in the movie, but it's that slow burn to watch him go insane and then try to murder his family. Love a slow burn. Asleep? I have not, and everybody tells me it's great. I loved it, but I'll I tell had, you, oh. I I was very ha- I read the book. Yep. And the problem with that is, if you know, as you know, in the book. Shining. Yep. The hotel explodes. Yes. Now I know when King wrote Dark to Sleep, he Boom. regretted he did that. That he made it blow up. Yep. So it was uh, Mike Flanagan, right, that directed yep. Dark to Sleep. Yep. Now, yep. He's a huge King fan. He appre- he loves the books and appreciates the films. Yep. And he went to King and said, "Look, your fans know that movie more than they know your book." Yes. I'm sorry to say. And by the way. The blend knows. Stephen and, King wow. hated the Stanley Kubrick interpretation. He, he hated but it, and I'm under, like, he understands that that's the fans' connection. Yep. Please, please, please see this movie. Just buy it. All right. Okay. All right. Because let me tell you something. They used the blueprints of the original film for all the hotel scenes, and that movie was so much better than I ever expected it to be. And I don't want to say too much, and I hope this isn't spoiling anyway. There's a child murder in that. That was so unnerving. It's a tough watch. If you now I'm gonna watch. That's all you have to say. I'm watching you it. Have, if you ever have thought to yourself, when kids go missing, yep. and then weeks later they find these children dead, and you, and you, it's a horrific thing. And you, when you watch this scene, that stuff comes back to you, and you all of a sudden go, "Wow, was it that? Was it that?" Yep. Traumatic for that child. Was it that bad? It's a tough scene to watch. Happy Sunday, everybody! Yeah. <laughs> Holy dog shit! But this that's movie. No, no, no! A guy who runs a page called Macabre Theater is a happy, fun, loving, lucky go 
happy guy. But you, you get and it, get, Doc get, Mark rolling all the way back to the beginning, 2018 Halloween, when the little kid uh, in the pickup truck when he smashes his head in the window. I totally didn't expect that. Yes. I did. I, I did. Oh, now you, you ruined it for that. me. Because a kid would rather go to dance class than go hunting. No, I love that because. Goodwill hunting. Old school Myers from the original film. This kid was in his way. Yep. And he was gonna mess things up for him, and he had to go. And that's Ooh. why he gets taken out. The... He walked right by that baby crying. Mm. Oh. Right. I was just gonna bring that up. The baby was in a threat. Yep. Oh. The, he just walked over and he Baby's saw the baby not a crying. Threat. And you, but but Fuck. when you watched it. After he had killed the kid in the pickup oh, truck, thought you thought he was going to go over and just go, thump. Yeah. and the I would have fucking jumped through the roof and went, yeah! The plot thickens. It's like a drive through it, like a, a, like a, like a no. Popeye's chicken when, uh, Please don't. <laughs> when the sandwiches are, are uh, you're a baby you're crying. You're talking about Popeye's chicken sandwiches barking. again? Oh, oh, I love a Popeye's <laughs> chicken sandwich. But the drive through so, it can be a crazy place. Shining. Too. Love it. Yep. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Boom. Stanley Kubrick, awesome. Yes, what do you think? Yes. All right, here we go. Where's my cursor? Yeah. Hills Have Eyes, the remake. You didn't like it. I can tell by the look on your face. <laughs> I <laughs> He's like, for sure you were going to see the original. Uh, by the way, I liked the original, but I think... Wes Craven yep, again. Yep, Wes Craven again. I just think the remake did the original justice and just updated it to here's today. The, here's the problem with and, the original. It's very dated. Yes, then that's why... I think the remake really did it, but if you want to talk about uncomfortable rape scenes, do not do no, go to my not house. I've seen watch it. this. Yes, but, but my go-to is the original. Yes, but I'm, I'm talking to people out here. If you are uncomfortable with rape scenes and you don't want to see some 350-pound mongoloid raping <laughs> a, a teenage girl, don't watch this movie because it that is very unnerving in this movie. When they so I, if I you haven't see seen that. it, if you haven't seen the movie. It's basically Arizona desert where the, the U.S. used to do all their nuclear testing. There was a town. They told all the people, we're going to test nukes. You need to leave. The people said, fuck you. We're not going to leave. They tested the nukes anyways, and it turned all these people into these deformed, mutant, just totally freaky people. And they and ended they up on the Moose there. and Squirrel show. And then they, uh, and they ended up as a co-host on the, uh, the, the <laughs> Moose and Squirrel show. I, I have seen, um, and Ed Mazry and Aaron Brockovich. Like yeah, okay, so you did like it. All right. Ed Mazry and Aaron Brockovich represented them, <laughs> and they sued the whole town of New Mexico uh, City. That's a and sequel. yeah, See, that, that's a sequel. There you go. Yep. Oh, Get Aaron yeah. Brockovich out that's there and have saying. him. Yep. But so I, I really, the first one was kind of dated, and it was, it was. It, I don't want to say it was a tough watch, but it's, it's wicked 1970s cinematography. Listen, we, we keep coming back to remakes. Yes, I hate remakes. Yep. Okay, so I need to put out there my two favorite, what I think are the best ever all-time remakes. Happen is the thing. It, he's on, it's on the list. Okay. And Cronenberg's the fly. Mm. Oh, please tell me. You, you, so the one with Jeff Goldblum? With Vincent yes. Price? Yes, that's real. Oh. By the way. A return I'm going to disappoint you because I never saw the original fly, but I saw the remake. I don't know how impressive you'd be. It's 1950s. Right. Yep. Is that Vincent Price? Or is that Gee, Return? Vincent Price is in the stand. Return of the Fly. The Return of the really, Fly. I, like I only know that because yep. of the Misfits You're not song. You go and see the original fly and go, wow, that was better than the remake. Yep. There's no, you have to understand, and this is what I've always said about remakes. Remake a film that needs be, to be can remade. Be, can be better. Yes. Okay, and, and that's not the, anything against the original Fly, but it was the 1950s. So they took that concept in Cronenberg, like, wow. I mean, it was this, this, this blossom of a uh, story. It's yep. something that they couldn't even conceive in the 1950s. And that's... That is why I think that the uh, the, the remake <clears throat> was really good. I, I, I enjoyed the movie with, with Jeff Goldblum throwing up on his hand and eating it. I would think that was pretty I'm gonna, great. I'm gonna That's tell you fun. Right now a movie that justly could be fantastic if you remade it because please don't say Christine because I don't no, want to see a 19. Of the killer tomatoes. I don't want to see a dry. The original film had iconic pictures. Like if you again if you grew up with uh, famous monsters of filmland, yep. you all of these pictures and then when you saw the film, it was a little bit of a letdown. It's Motel Hell. Yes. Yep. If you remade that today, and, will they make a beef jerky gave, out of people? And, and gave that to the people who did the Halloween. Yes. 2018, you would have a really <clears throat> scary movie. But that you movie, got, but you have to take the campiness out of it because it was kind of campy, kind of goofy. But again, the, the iconic pictures of that pig head. Yep. On the guy in the chainsaw. As a kid looking at that, I couldn't wait to see that movie. Yep. And it was She's a, a bit pig of a already. Yes. A little bit of a letdown. If you haven't seen it, they, they plant people up to their necks and then hypnotize them and then make beef jerky out of them. So I like beef jerky. Maybe it tastes, I don't know. We'll have to call Jeff like Dahmer and soil, how it Like tastes. Soil and Green or something? Like they, 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 It's people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Whatever. 
All right, so <clears throat> he'll see. I add yeah. nothing. I bring nothing to the table. All right, so you you talked about the thing. Here we go. Oh, there's so, the thing. The Volkswagen. John Coppin is the thing. I think is one of the most well done horror movies ever. It did terrible. It, it was off. It did awful in the theaters. You, you, and you know what they always attribute that to? Because it was the same year ET came out. Aha. Uh-huh. So ET oh. came out with this lovely, this alien with who was good with kids. Yeah, ET and M. Love to sleep in a river. <laughs> What, what is going on? And he totally <laughs> misunderstood, but what am I? I saw that in the yep. theater, and I own the film. What was my favorite? I love it. It's, That's without cool. Without a doubt, one of my favorite. Yep, Kurt Russell. Yep. Tons, of, tons of great acting in the movie. Lots of great actors. Uh, Keith David, who's been in every movie under the sun. Yeah. Uh, gr- just a great movie. They and, live. And, yeah, he's in that. Yep, with Roddy, Roddy, Roddy Piper. Oh, I'm here to <laughs> kick ass he, and he, chew bubble gum. He, however, does and not. all out of gum. So, <laughs> I, I got to ask you, your you thoughts. What? They at, live. at the end, at the end of the thing, when it's Kurt Russell and Keith David, it's just the two of them left. Are one of them the alien? Yeah. Who is? I think it, I, I think it's Keith David. I think so it's him. I. But they kind of they're like, oh, what are we gonna do? And they just sit there drinking whiskey, and they're like, I guess we're gonna sit here till the fire burns out. And they just sit there. You know, the, the movie ends with just the two of them staring at each other, and everything's on fire. Saturday night but at they my leave house. Leave it out so there. Sharing that body, the body, sharing that bottle. Yep. Oh, they that could, was that was yep, Freudian. They could they could both be. But that's one of those things that people ask all the time. Were they both human? Were they both the alien? And that's why they didn't attack each other, because they were both the alien, and they knew that each other At was the point, alien. At that it didn't matter. You could, have, you, could, you could wait 10 days before you did anything. It's just the yep. two of them. They're, and, and you know what's going to happen in the end? The alien's going to freeze again. Yes. So it doesn't really matter. Nope, it doesn't matter. No. So the alien's going to freeze again, and when they thaw him out, he's going to come back. Now. Did you see the prequel? I've, that's, that's also one here, too. <laughs> I get the prequel, which... When, you like it. Okay, I'm going to say this. When I first saw the commercials for it, and they show the chick walking through with the flamethrower, and I said, did you really remake probably the best horror movie ever and change the fucking character of McGravy to fucking a woman? But they did. That is, but, but that was the impression when you just yeah, saw the previews. I said, this is dumb. I will never see this movie. And one of my friends, Tabitha Titus, said, hey, you do realize this is a prequel, right? And I'm like... Can I, can I say what made the whole movie? The end. Yes. With them missing the airing. And, and, the, and, and the music comes in. Yes. About, now, what I haven't done and I want to do, I want to watch them back to back and watch that first. Yep. And we got to watch that one first and then the other one. I yep. haven't seen the thing in quite a long time. So we'll see like this. My son has been dying to see it, and that may be the way I go with it. Motel Hell, uh, Brennan B. And I like in Motel Hell how they would pull them out of the dirt after they hypnotized them with a rope around the neck in the towing with the tractor. Yes, and then they took them and made beef jerky out of them. They had that little spiral thing. We're going to talk about Motel Hell again. And yep. I just found so, out uh, uh, my small dog at home just got skunked. Nice. Cliff. In the, in the back, yeah, Cliff. Uh, Cliff Burton Daly. At least the bus didn't fall on him. Yep, yeah, there's that. <laughs> it should have been Lars. It should have been Lars. I am so glad. Yes. Oh, yeah. MJ's oh, doing MJ, fine. Yes. Yep. She hasn't. She hasn't started pissing in the house yet again. But I'm sure that's coming. She but she a pees toast every time. To MJ. Yes. Oh, we got one that's actually got beer in it. Yes. MJ. MJ's Cheers. doing well. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Uh, the cat, not so much, but uh, MJ definitely doing well. But yes. So the prequel I thought was absolutely fantastic. Loved it. It was every bit as good as the original. And yes, watch them one to the other because it's one of those movies where the prequel ends. And then with them in the helicopter, the Norwegians, and they're chasing the dog. And that is how the original starts, is they're chasing that husky through the snow. So they movies, if you watch them back to back, you could blend them and one just rolls into the other. And they are, at, I think, both the of these movie movies. Gives no, credit. no, and it, it's, it's very like underrated. It doesn't exist. It's criminally underrated. Yeah. Oh. And, and, I, and I've mentioned to a couple of my friends that I was putting this on there, and they're like, dude, that movie sucks. And I'm like, fuck you. This movie is great. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Yes. Well, this, I fuck absolutely. You. Absolutely love the thing. Uh, All right, so now get to some of the classics. Oh yeah, you the gotta, Exorcist. You can't go through like horror Black movies. Horror. Yeah, I didn't like it. Okay. The only thing that I liked about The Exorcist is he got to watch Linda Blair when, jam herself wait, with the wait, cross. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> when did you see it? Well, when I was a kid. Really? Yes, I probably saw that. I was probably like because this thir- movie, thirteen or fourteen again, years old. I get back to this movie really scared me. Really. Now again, and you know, Roman Catholic. Yep. I've been going to church every Sunday. I still go every Sunday. Um, especially as a kid, I didn't know what hit me when I saw this movie. This really scared me. Um, 
you actually walked around thinking like, well, can anyone become possessed? Can anyone? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, um, you talk about slow burns. Yeah, that's even, why. I, even as an very. adult, going back and watch it, what I love, I love the the character of Detective Detective Tenderman. Um, mm -hmm. um, oh, I wish I, I'm terrible sometimes. The name, the great actor that played him, he was in Twelve Angry Men. Yep. Mm -hmm. old great movie. Grow, great movie. Yep. yep. Um, Arthur Miller. I, I don't know. I, I love this movie. I love everything about it. I love the priest that's losing his faith. That the way he regains it again is yep. by what's happening. Uh, the, 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 the show? so old he shouldn't be doing the exorcisms anymore. There's so much in that movie I love. I'm, I'm, I, I'm sad to know you don't like it. I'm a fan of a priest losing, losing his faith. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that because I've been through it. And I... Hey. All right, Bob Positive Latendra. and negative makes the world go round. I love the fact that the priest lost his faith. She masturbated with a cross, <laughs> threw up some pea soup, yeah. and her career tanked so yeah, bad yes. she had to perform naked and, in, 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 in B-movies and show her boobs. Because she was, she yeah, she was, was yeah. absolutely stunning and gorgeous, so, and that's all i got to say about The Exorcist. Bob Latrenda says he agrees. The Exorcist horrified as a kid. Uh -huh. And then Brendan says, I like The Omen. And, hey, that's kind of funny because Bob says he likes The Omen, too. And guess whoa, what? Whoa, the, whoa, hold on. Yeah, okay. Whoa, 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 look at that. All right, so backtrack. Okay. Worst sequel in history, Exorcist 2. Exorcist, oh, I never yeah. saw it. absolutely terrible. I don't I agree. It's funny. It's yeah. actually funny it, to watch. Yes, it's so bad it's, it's Exorcist funny. Exorcist 3. Have you seen it? I'm, I, two completely ruined me from the franchise. I no, never watched it. you're missing an incredible movie. Really? The book was written by William Peter Blatty. was called Legion. Okay. okay? It is a direct sequel. I'm going to give you the general premise. Okay, I'm not. This isn't a spoiler. It's the general premise of the story. Okay, love the a night premise. That Damien Karras, the priest, yep. fell down the stairs. Yep. At Ouch. the moment he was dying, they were executing a serial killer. That Kinderman was the one that apprehended. Him. He was he was called the um, the Zodiac killer. Yep. Oh, or it wasn't the Zodiac. I'm sorry, uh, the Gemini killer. But it's kind of like a Zodiac. Killer. Yep, yep. Okay? I'm a Gemini. So at the time he was being executed, the devil as a in your face, transferred his soul into the priest, which took years. And as he was buried, as the body rejuvenated, one day somebody picks up this guy dressed in a priest's outfit, roaming the streets, and they get Jason Miller back to play Karras, okay? And they put him in an asylum because he doesn't know who he is. It's the Gemini killer, but he looks like Damien Karras. And Kinderman, who coincidentally sees him because he's there at the asylum for the other day he says the person in that cell is Damien Karras they said we don't know who is this is a good movie the that's exactly the story of getting how we got you on the show yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not lying nope definitely not <laughs> So, but that being said, all right. I'm so, sure, Exorcist two. Biggest jump scares in horror movie history. Okay, so realize. Exorcist three. I, I will. I will check it out. Was, was there a Wilhelm scream yeah. in there somewhere? <laughs> so, <laughs> The Omen, oh. another movie that I I seen the first two and didn't watch any of the other ones, and I didn't really care for the first two. Just another one I just never got into. I love the first three. Really. All three. All uh, three. The three has a, has a little bit of timeline issues. If you don't examine the film too closely, because the holes are gigantic, but I enjoyed the first three movies. Uh, I watched the first two and just, I don't the know. First, the, you didn't find the first one? Gregory Peck. Yep. Let's go with that. Who's Absolutely better than Gregory actor. Peck? And this father has to come to terms. This guy's not even a religious man. He's got to come to terms that his son is possibly the Antichrist. Is he losing his mind? I, I'm pretty sure my father thought that about me while I was growing <laughs> up. At the, at, at, the, at the end, and then this is how the filmmaker, uh, this is how uh, Richard Donner, who made Superman. Yep. Party! What he, what he wanted to come across, his original intent was, this kid's not the Antichrist. This is all coincidence. This man is about to murder his son. Yep. Oh! And... Even though a, we all know that's there's a realization right, come yeah, to. But, but that, and I find that in its own right terrifying. It's it's maybe like I said, a lot of these movies I watch when they originally come out or within a couple of years. It, it might be something I, I need to rewatch where I might yeah. enjoy it a little bit more. When I was a kid, I'm like, where's the guy with the machete? <laughs> <laughs> no, no guy with a machete. That's not horror. That's not a little kid. I'll dude. I'll beat his ass out in the, in the parking lot. <laughs> point in the film. The father knows he, they adopted this kid. He kept it a secret from the, from the wife. 
Father knows they, best. They go to the grave of the real mother. Yep. They, un, they unveil the grave. Yep. And it's a jackal skeleton. That's stuff like that. That's exhumation. You don't like that anymore. He's moving on to the next one. Yeah, no oh. on the next one. All right. Here we go. So, oh. all right. This is all you because it's a movie I've never seen. <laughs> so the next, the, by the way, they're, they're, hold, hold, about, uh, hold on real slow. The next, I think, three or four, it's either three or four, were movies that you gave me that I've never okay. seen. And this, so this is, so this is, this is, this is, is, is the, the Dark Mark show. We, this we, is all we, you right here. We talk about subgenres and haunted house films is definitely a subgenre. Yep. One of my favorites. Again, I want to say this came out in 76. This, my mom took me to see this in the theater. Wow, you had a great uh, mom. Very slow burn. Burnt. Uner- now, this is made by, it's Dan Curtis, who made the soap opera Dark Shadows, which was a first of its kind. I mean, back when that came it out. Inspired in Gene Simmons' uh, Bat character, or whatever the fuck he was. Dark Shadows. Did it? Yeah. I did, I did. Fun fact. Um, yes! First soap opera of its kind, focused around a vampire family. Yep. Um, he Count. then went on to, uh, he, he's got a, he's got a, Way of comics, but when it came to this, he made this based on the book. So this is a, a haunted house horror movie. Haunted house is about this uh, family who rent a summer home. Uh, they, they, it, Betty Davis is the grandmother. Karen oh, Black is the mother. Love Betty uh, Davis. Oliver Reed is, is the father. All American family. They rent this home. They, they can't believe they get this home for the entire summer for seven hundred dollars with one stipulation. Uh oh, here it comes. Our very old mother who is kind of almost bedridden, can't really leave the house when we go away, and all we ask is that you bring her meal her, in a tray every day up to this room. Like Grandpa Joe and Willy Wonka. Give him some cabbage soup, and unless you give him a golden ticket to the factory, he will stay in bed. Yeah. <laughs> all Prick. kinds of bizarre things begin to happen. Unexpected things, haunted house type things. This is one of those the most foreboding movies I've ever seen, and you talk about the 1970s and dark endings. And this is coming from you. One of the you. darkest endings I've ever seen in a film, and again, thought about this movie for weeks and weeks and weeks after I saw it. It's still my favorite. I still watch it. The music is extraordinary. Now I have um, to see it. I, I, I was going to say it. It's very slow burn. Yep. Just keep that in mind. And, and not a lot of killing, no machetes. All I know okay, about no burnt offerings. All right. About Black Christmas. Run oh, DMC I, did the soundtrack to this, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's Christmas, Christmas in Harlem. Hollis. No. Black Christmas ahead of its time. Margot Kidder. Okay, yeah, uh, Superman. Yep. Oh yeah. It. Lois Lane. Um, you got me. Who yeah, got you? She, it's uh, Sorority House at Christmas time. Most people are going home for Christmas. Some are staying. Um, a bunch of sorority girls, and what we see from the the onset of the film is the heavy breathing. Point of the view of the killer. This Stalking. is all done yep. before Halloween. Okay. So this is the first. Finds his way into the attic of this house. Oof. Phone like a raccoon. Happening. This is the old, you know. The when old a stranger old, calls. Yeah, yeah. You've got that whole thing going on. Dial in for These murder. These are the most vulgar phone calls. I, to this day, I go, oof, wow, I can't believe they just said that. You haven't and been I, on Tinder lately, have you? <laughs> And so they're receiving these phone calls. They're reported. The police aren't really doing anything. There's a missing girl in town. The I'm shocked. Hands full. Very suspenseful, very scary movie right to the last minute. Absolutely worth a watch. If you like horror movies around Christmas time, this is definitely something to put on two or three days before Christmas. W- wasn't there a Christmas-themed horror movie that they yanked from the movie theaters at one point? with Silent, Santa- Night, Deadly Silent Night, Deadly Night, where Santa Claus was killing people, and they're like, Santa Claus can't be a serial <laughs> killer. And I'm like, why not? <laughs> uh, that was movie was protested. That yeah. actually did it more favor than... <laughs> You know, you when you, negative sometimes yep. negative publicity. I that, that's actually one of my favorite Christmas uh, movies. No. <laughs> Die Hard is my favorite Christmas movie, but <laughs> now no, let me say this: it's one of those movies where I wanted to see it, and I was forbidden to see it. My parents, because they all the, the hoopla that came around it, my parents it's never let me see it. Now. And Love then it, it kind of just fell off the radar for me. And when you said it, uh, when you said this, that's what I originally thought it was. And I'm like, wait a minute, no, that wasn't the name of this movie. And I'm like, ah, when he gets here, I'll ask him. Because it's one of those things I always forget about. Silent Night Deadly Night takes itself very seriously, yeah. which can kind of be funny. There are a few really creepy scenes in it. There's, there's this one scene where his family is visiting the, the, the grandpa with dementia in the, in the, um, in the no. old age home. Yep. And when the family walks away and the little boy is left with the grandpa, who doesn't speak and just stares off into space, grabs the little boy and goes... You know what really happens? It's the scariest <laughs> scene, and, if, and, and the rest of the movie, ah, 
It's a lot of slasher fun. Yeah, it's okay. I'm, I'm for it. Check it out. Brendan B. and Santa killed my dreams every year. I never got what I wanted. Hey, man, I feel your pain. Your bike's on the way. <laughs> We're shipping it to Florida. All right, here we go. Uh, Phantasm. Eh. I've never seen it. And I'll say this. Eh. That was on in Gro the background. Growing you know. up as a kid, it was always on HBO, yep. and I just could never bring myself to watch it. No, it was uh, on in the background. Again, yep. going back to when I was 9, 10. Yep. Did not see it in the theater, saw it on HBO. Yep. And... The school that I went to and we could watch to, this is back when, again, not most people, we, we did have cable. We were one of the last families on the block to get it, but most people didn't have it. Uphill. They still did things like movies, Disney movies at the school. Right. Oh, yeah. So. Challenger explosion. Friday night, I was there and I had to walk home in the dark. This was right after seeing this. Oof. And as I passed this patch of woods, I ran the whole way home. <laughs> I went to the park convention and <clears throat> these stars from it all these years later. And it was, what was really neat was being able to tell that story to them and say, look, at this is one of the scariest things I ever saw when I was 10 years That's ago. so cool. It's a very surreal film. It's a very, uh, it's a little, it's a little light on plot, but a lot of it is before Wes Craven, dream, reality, yep. surreal, very scary main character, the tall man. I see a the casket. The is definitely worth a watch i'm not even gonna tell you to, to watch the franchise Definitely just the first one yeah. all right there's another one uh i can't even pronounce it you're gonna Spiro have Gyra? Now, oh. that's, where, that's where we go to launch it and i, and I, I said, don't I speak greek this. this is the italian splatter okay oh. film. uh in, in in the um so when you drop tomato sauce on the floor <laughs> that's italian splatter <laughs> there's a lot of italian splatter and horror films out there Yep. Ooh. Three main directors are Mario Brava. Of course, Lucio Mario. Fulci, which I wore that today. Which nice. Hell, yep. And in Italy, it was City of the Living Dead, and Dario Argento, which probably the most famous of those of those three. Uh, Lucio Fulci. Of course, there's a Mario a major or a Lucio. Vision. Uh, to watch his movies is like a painting, a horror painting. Full splatter, a lot of eye gore, a lot of you know. Yep. And, and uh. A, a, Blood, got you name. We even talk. We're talking about people regurgitating their own guts. Oh, the mouth, nice. Blood. Yep. Story wise, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't it's fucking just, worry about you're, you're it. You're in it. You're really in it for the gore. <laughs> that was really perfect. Translate to American. Don't and worry Mario about Robert's it. Mario Bava is probably the most famous. He did the movie Black Sabbath, which the band took their name from. Yep. Uh, it's an anthology film, three different stories. Never heard of them. Probably one of the probably one of the better. They do have dubbed versions. Uh, I would definitely recommend at least Black Sabbath. They also did Black Sunday, which very popular, black and white. Is the Sabbath. Um, that's very Argento, that's very lazy titling, if you Argento, ask me. Argento, probably the most famous in this country. He actually, we talked about Dawn of the Dead. He was one of the producers of that. Okay. Romero. Yep. So a lot of that movie, including the soundtrack, he didn't do the soundtrack, but he hired an Italian rock group, Goblin, they did the soundtrack to that film. Um, he is most popular for his Jalo films, which those were like uh, almost like the pulp books. Okay. Murder mysteries. Yep. Uh, the Glove Killer, Who Is It? What are they doing? The big twist at the end. Uh, Suspiria is his most famous. Um, Suspiria is that. Uh, oh, sorry. Suspiria is his most famous. Um, I think it had American actresses and. Oh, you've got the remake up there, by Yeah, I, I just. You gave me the name and I pulled it up. Yeah, I was so like, ah, this says it's Amazon, so it's probably not the right the one. Remake, I think, feel it's a little over long and a little bit too much ballet going on. Maybe yeah, uh, does ba ballet do they kill everyone doing ballet? Because I'll watch it. <laughs> That'll make me watch it right there. But it's definitely an acquired taste. Uh, you watch these movies mostly for the visual style and yep. the gore. As, a, as again, some, some storylines are okay, but you, you just have to take it with a grain of salt. There's a lot of uh, loss in translation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But yep. Italian splatter is is something that I grew up with. It was the, the forbidden, you know, hard to find, hard to see. And it's the, it's the gore movies versus, uh, it, it's not uh, the torture porn, but it's just more gore. Right. Yes. Okay. Like yeah. A lot of lot of uh, eye piercings. Yeah. Yeah. As I said before, and uh, Gates of Hell again. These are movies that were unrated or rated X. Yep. So getting in was next to not happening. Uh, as a kid, so these were the, the pictures and stuff you looked through magazines and old and couldn't wait. And then video stores opened and and you, no hold it, and you could see whatever you wanted. Right. All right, now we're, we're going to get into some of the bad ones now. So uh, there is your uh, the 
Glenn Danzig movie. What do you how do you pronounce was, that? Was terrible. I yes. never, never get through the whole thing. You, you want to see one of the Veronica? Who gave this guy money? Or I mean, whatever you think about the Misfits and him as a as a, an artist, it yep. doesn't matter. Because whoever gave this guy money to make a movie should be ashamed of themselves. Probably the same people who gave Rob Zombie money to make it, movies. It was. It, it, listen, I couldn't get through it. I, I got something to say. <laughs> and uh, Hacker Lantern. This is during the early 80s when everybody was making horror movies. Yep. And these were uh, Hindus who came and thought, wow, this is a market we could get into. Let's make a horror film. A market. Not only, do, not only do they have the pentagram star is wrong in it, it just goes on and on. They, you want to, if you're looking for a comedy, I <laughs> kill you, my friend. watch that movie. That is absolutely horrendous. I am going to kill you, my friend. And, and I, I put on this list, Strange Land. That was the one that Dee Snyder did. Oh. You didn't like it. No, I didn't like it. Not at all. You liked it because it was really it was really uh, street justice the song. Yep. The song. Yep. And it was Captain Howdy the the uh, stay yes. away yeah. from Captain Howdy. It was as bad as it, it was as bad film. as the price by Twisted Sister. <laughs> it's, it's not a favorite. That, by the way, this is a movie that I think, like you talked about, give people money and make the movie over again. Yeah. I think Strangeland could be really good if somebody. Not Rob Zombie. Thank you. But somebody that knows how to make movies took that plot. Wes Craven. And remade the movie. Yeah, well, he's dead, so I don't think he very well. Yep, John, give it to John Carpenter. Give it to Blumhouse. Give it to somebody Mark that Lavoie. knows how to make movies. Give mm -hmm. it to give it to Moose and Lavoy. Uh, anyway, give, uh, give, give it to yeah. a fucking NYU student, yeah. for Christ's sakes, and, and uh, let's I, see what happens. I think it could be really good. But Roll I, the dice. I think the original was just crap. I, I, I agree with you. I, I definitely... I think I like the premise more than the film. Yep. Uh, and, and I agree with that. I but love I, I love I a woman with her with her lips be, be, be sewn up. Else. That's good. Yes. Oh yeah, that that's definitely a plus. Yeah. yeah. All right, another one that I think is bad: Jeepers Creepers. Ah, Christ, Christ! I saw the first one, didn't. didn't okay. Get it. And, and, by the way, if you saw the first one and you thought that it was bad, two and three are about a hundred times worse, and it just gets worse and worse. So that's 300 a, times worse. Another movie yeah, another you movie that I think if you gave somebody that actually could write a script and Glenn make Dan. a movie, I think that the story itself is good, but the movies are just absolutely just absolute trash. Can't stand them. Garbage. Terrible. My Don't phone like just died. I can't read comments anymore. So no. who's, who's saying what? What, what? What's moving and shaking out there in the uh, Moose no, no, and Squirrel no, 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 world? No, no, no. Uh, John Carubacalis, he knows you're alone. With Tom Hanks made a cameo in that movie. Oh, was he peeing? Yeah. Tom Hanks has a piss yeah. scene in every movie yeah, that he's much. in. Pretty uh, much. Creep Show and Hellraiser. We're gonna talk about Hellraiser, but I didn't get. I didn't. We didn't do Creep Show. Uh, uh, Creep Show two. First Creep Show. By the way, I've never seen. I've seen Creep Show two, which I like, but I've never seen the original. Kiss me, the Phantom of the Park. I saw the original Creep Show. I've never saw the original Creep Show. I saw Creep Show two, with the cigar it's store in the end. I saw Creep Show also. Is it better? Absolutely, a thousand times. Because I like. I, I, I like to. Even though it said King and. Romero were, I think, involved in the second one. I, I question that. Don? Because if you saw the original, you would question yourself. The original is so well done. And I think still holds up today. If you're a fan of the DC Comics, nope. huge, huge yeah. send up to that. Okay, I will. Not DC Comics. I meant to say EC. EC, okay. Horror comics in the 50s. Yep. Still nope. All right, so Jeepers no. Creepers, awful. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But now, uh, I'm going to get into ones. The, the, the next bunch that I get into. The Sucky Collection? i got to be one. <laughs> I gotta, okay, I loved these as a kid, but they are unwatchable as an adult. Right. And this is one of them. Yep. When this first came out as a kid, it was campy and goofy. It wasn't yep. really the scary horror movie, but I could watch these as a kid. I've tried rewatching any of the Chucky movies as an adult, and I'm just like, as dumb as dumb could be. Are you fucking it's, kidding me? It, it, yeah, it's just so bad. I got to ask Mark a question while we're on this uh, small doll thing. Karen Black, Trilogy of Terror. Yeah. Did that scare the living balls the off of you? Of the three. With the, the doll. little doll, yeah. the tribal guy with the fucking knife. Yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, excellent movie. Um, scared the fucking taint off of me when I was a kid. Yeah, it's um, and I think that that's this. Did they base the it on doll, it? Well, the living doll thing, I think. It's been done. Uh, you get Annabelle. There's uh, all kinds of other yeah, movies. The with Twilight the Zone. When Chuck did first it. came out, the first Child's Play. Yep. Yes. It was very new. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's why I caught on. Everything after that, though? Uh, 
garbage. It, it just, and it was another one of those, like a nightmare on Elm Street, where he had a witty thing to say before he killed everybody. Stupid. And it was just like. So it, did the kid on the, uh, the, 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 the the baby on the dinosaurs show on yeah. ABC. <laughs> Go back to his trilogy. You know, that was a TV movie of the week. That was yes. not a film. That no, was a that, movie of the week. And right. I tell you, back that in the Karen 70s, Black's career was in the, the toilet. Weeks were frightening. Some of them. Because but there was nothing else. Trilogy there was no terror Netflix. Was terrifying, that one story. Yeah. And the other two stories. That's okay. up for debate. You, mm-hmm. you want to you hear something that's terrifying? Apparently, everyone is telling us that the Chucky is now a series on TV. I, it I is. Know. I that, saw the previews for that. That's terrifying that anyone would sink any more money into this and shit. What was, it's a, getting. It's a lot of people saying it's good. Really? Yeah. Ooh. I have not seen it, but. The talk out there is it's actually pretty decent. What was more terrifying than that was the old people's like IBS commercials during <laughs> the <laughs> the previews for that. Same time period. Yep. Trilogy of Terror. Karen Black. There's two other uh, made-for-TV movies as a as a child I thought were absolutely terrifying. One was called The Dark Secret of Harvest Home. Had Betty Davis and it. it was about the small community that never you know, saw. You know, like these children with corn and they worship the corn. These these really backwards religious don't, people. Don't yes. don't spoil really, my don't spoil my ending. Really scary TV movie. Okay. Betty Davis is from Lowell. Fun fact. Yeah. Um, another one was called. Um, I think it was called uh, the people, not the people under the stairs. Attack of the people under the people under the stairs was was bad. Don't be afraid of the dark. Oh! And it was about these things that lived in the walls and this yeah. little girl that could hear them and no one else would believe her. It's very scary. Two, two TV movies. So don't be afraid of the so, stairs. So let's, let's talk about Wes Craven garbage, the people under the stairs. And oh little, my God, was that oh. terrible. Another one that could be remade. And yeah, uh, it pro- if they remade it. And it's, it's got Vin Rames in it, so he's a, he was a good actor, but the movie itself just sucked. But all right, so Speaking of little girls. Yeah, speaking of now, is, would you consider this to be under a the movie, s- Poltergeist? Th- um, this is one. Why are you thinking about that? I saw this Again, movie a hundred times on I HBO loved when I was it a kid. As a kid yep. And I've tried to rewatch it as an adult, and yep. I'm like, it's Same. dumb. Same. I that was one of my top as a kid. Like, wow. I think I went and saw it a few times. Yeah. Yep. yep. Tried to revisit it. And I you showed it to my kids, and I actually sat back going, doesn't hold oh, up. Okay. Ugh. And the scene Fast that forward, was but... my favorite, where he pulls his face yep, apart, he's, yep, he's, yep. was really bad. And was even it? and the other the the, the the two my two favorites actually my three favorite scenes. The one where he's pulling his face apart in the mirror. The one where he takes the chicken leg and he puts it in his mouth and he's digging yeah. through the refrigerator the and he drops it and there's maggots in it Uh-oh. and he throws it in the sink. And the, I watch it now and I'm just like, yeah, I've been to it, a, I've it, been to a truck stop. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. I, I, yeah, I, I I've eaten uh, have I've had lunch. I've from gone Circle to Wendy's. K. Great when I was a kid. Don't hold up yeah, at Col- all. And this. Craig T. Coach isn't yep. going to save you nope. when he's your dad. Yep, Craig Nelson is. And not this poor save you. girl. Yep. She. Uh, she, she's dead now, right? The actress. She died shortly after this movie. Yep. She had a bowel obstruction and poop came up her throat, and she choked to death and died. <laughs> that, that's thank, the, thanks for that, that visual. That, by the way, they should have put that in the movie. That would have made it. That's the explain like I'm five yep. version. Okay. I'm not going to get into the. Uh, yeah. So here bowel we, here, obstruction. Here's another one that Hellraiser. Is another one that I loved as a kid. I try rewatching it as an adult, and I'm just like, I. I, I, I like the. I'm the only like hell. All right, so. By the way, the, the the first two are watchable, but I still don't enjoy them like I did when I was a kid. I as a kid I could watch these over and over, and as an adult, it's one of those ones I can watch every once in a while. And that's yeah. about it. You know what I just rewatched last night it was Candyman. Uh. No, did they, didn't they just remake that? Yeah. Yes. And, I, and I, I haven't seen the remake. And I think that's a good idea because. I loved Candyman when I first saw it. Then when I rewatched it, it's been a long time. Yep. And when they I made it. it last night, I'm like, there was very little Candyman in this movie. Yep. They made the, <clears throat> the before it was white chocolate. Now the new one is diverse, dark so it's dark, dark chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, yeah, that's uh, what everybody does and, now. And, and 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 most of the Hellraiser ones went straight to DVD because they were so bad. Like the first, well, like you know what they were? I think a lot. Like let me look at that. The last three. I think were other movie ideas, and they didn't know what to do with them. They, and they just, eh, put, let's put Pinhead in it. Right. Let's just put Pinhead in it. It's a Hellraiser movie. Because when you watch them, there, yeah, there's, there's obviously different. Uh oh. The Howling. <laughs> Another one. I loved it as a kid. The, still, the first two. I still love the first one. The first Never one. Saw it. Yeah, the first one. And I still like it. by the way, one that could be redone. And I, I think, oh, yeah. I think you could like the like the original Friday the Thirteenth. I think they could redo the Howling, and it you, would be it would be really well. American Werewolf in London, because Rick Baker, the same guy that did the effects in original Howling, did them in Werewolf in London. You have you never even seen the, the transformation the, scene? I, I've seen the part where he, he walks through with a Chinese menu in his hand. Walking through Soho late in the rain. I was waiting all day to say that. Yeah. 
Yes. Have, have you not at least I, seen I the transcript? Love a Warren Zevon poll. Seen him Good man. Warner. Okay. It's Rick Baker and his better work is in American War Warner. Okay. Although I love Halloween because to me that's, And Brendan Bean had the camp. actor, uh, J- Robert, uh, what's his face? I, I enjoy it a lot. Everything after that, uh, I'm going to go with Halloween 6, believe it or not, for me is the better of all of them. Really? I can say that I watched the first three and nothing after that because the first one I liked, the second one was, mm, I, I could get through it. The third one I thought was terrible. The fourth one I was like, I can't believe I rented this movie. And then when five come out, I was like, no thanks. Five I'll, I'll watch The Shining the, again. the whole haunted house castle thing. It's not, yeah, I, it's not, it's better than four. It's better, definitely better than four. I watched three Jeopardy and then go to sleep. Th- three was just My so life. bad. But Christopher the, Lee. Dracula They're not even listening to me two, anymore. And he should be embarrassed. Yes. I have my own conversation with you guys. But I get... The, and Sybil Danning was in that. I, I did not, uh, I did not know Danning that. And Sybil Danning in that film... Yes. ...takes her top off. Like they it. Knew, they knew that movie was so bad yeah. that oh. during the ending credits... Don't ...they like keep it. re-showing that scene. She was so embarrassed during the premiere, she stormed out of there. <laughs> with her <laughs> boobs out? <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay to watch that <clears throat> on Cinemax. It's amazing they made so many of these movies with how bad they got, and they just kept throwing money at it and making another one. And it, and it was, it's, you know, you stepped in a pile of dog shit, and then you stepped in another pile of dog shit, and then you took your shoe off and you stepped in a pile of dog shit. That's three piles just, of dog shit. It, it was just. Says Vinny Barbarino. Yeah, and it just kept getting worse. Yeah. It just, and then. Like, uh, the, like our show today. Yes, the, la- the last on the, on the list is another one. Oh! That as a kid I liked and trying to rewatch it, Children of the Corn. It's. The best thing that the best thing about Children of the Corn is it got us the Testament song, Disciples of the Watch. That's about the best thing about this movie. Good. And I can't believe they made eight of them. I, by the way, when I pulled this up, I'm like, they, they made eight of these movies. I know that they made three, but I didn't know that they made the, eight. The best thing about eight corn. The original Children of the Corn for me was the last quarter of the film with the whole you know sacrifice thing going yep. on, yep. going against their leader uh, Malachi. Oof. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's tough to sit through. It's very slow. It's a it's a very slow burn, and it's very very slow. There's very little of the movie that you want to watch. You just kind of go in and you can Sometimes watch like that. What happens when you take a short story and try to make a two-hour film? Yep. Yeah. That's a problem. It's too much. Right. Yeah. There's that, not enough film. Right nope. There's definitely not. Which and, reminds and, and this, Children of the Corn. That yes. reminds me of uh, this week. Uh, I want to give a big toast to Pepto Bismol yeah. because <laughs> somehow you you. Not you. Me. We all got some kind of stomach virus. Yes, Speaking of children yes. of the corn. Yeah. That food show. A big, yes, it was all the beef that we yes, ate last week. It yeah, was we a had, big, we uh, big, big toast to Pepto-Bismol. Yeah, no, Mag- Magnus there was sick too. Everyone. Yep. Yeah, there will be no part two to the beef story because no, everybody ended up sick. that was fun as hell. But nope, uh, Nobody got sick from the beer week, but we got sick from the roast beef week. Uh, so yeah. That's, we don't know which sandwich made us sick, but one of those definitely had me sitting on the porcelain throne for a little I, longer than I wanted. I saw Children of the Corn yeah. every morning I woke <laughs> up, and that was fun. Corn for Folks. texture. Folks. So, all right. So, uh, let's, get some, let's get some comments here. What are we missing? I mean, did we... I, I went through and I kept asking for everybody, and I'm like, what are we missing? What movies did we miss? Oh, there's, I'm sure there's a lot. Oh, there's, there's, there's Jaws. Tons, Jaws is a horror movie. Jaws is, a, is Jaws a horror movie or is it an action When movie you're afraid shark? of sharks like my sister Leanne is... It's a horror Jaws, movie. Jaws is a horror movie because... Oh, we talked about it at the beginning of yeah, the show. It's simple, ah, uh, it's simple math. Yep. Yep. Something unseen, something below you that you can't see. You don't know what's under there, and that that's the scare factor. There's a yes. real uh, uh, fear of the sea. is called thalassophobia. Yeah, and me. and it's it's it, it, it would, f- I don't go in the water and, and probably oh, I, I said at six years old. I, are you afraid I mean, of A B and no, D as well no, or is I it just C? Fear of the C word. Uh. No, um, if I had a boat, I'd name it C word. S E A W A R D. There you go. Yes, but um, or cirrhosis of the river. Um, <laughs> The philosophobia is a fear of the ocean and, you know, what lies beneath, which brings us to that film. Yep. That's a, that was a frightening uh, uh, little picture there. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw these two out to you because they're, they're older movies. Uh, Bob La Tundra, The Blob. Da, the 1959. Uh, the original or the remake, either or. The, the bo- original is good, again, for what it is. It's a 50s movie. Yep. 59, okay, I think, right? It's 58. I don't know the exact it, Let's not do uh, semantics yep. here. It's a good movie. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's not something I get excited to watch, 
The remake is crazy. Really? 1988. Is it? It's crazy good or? Crazy good. Ooh. I... Definitely worth a watch. Okay. Yeah. I don't really see what happens to a person when the blob devours them. Overtakes yeah. them. That's a good movie. Ah, that's fine. Right. What? Uh, what about the fog? And that's another one that was an original one of and a remake. My favorites, John Carpenter. Yep. That's when he was still making really good scary movies. Yep. It's a campfire tale. Um, so it's campy. Jamie Lee Curtis Intense. and her mother. Yep. In it. Together. Both of them in the fog. Oh, okay. nice. And, Doing uh, blow at Studio yeah, 54. Uh, Hal Holbrook, I think, is in it. Oh, oh. Bunch of big stars. Wow. And, uh, very well done. It, start, it opens with it as a campfire tale. And it, as it goes forward, it's for Adrian Barbeau is the. Yep. Uh, oh, DJ. we're talking 1970s right, boobs Bre- here. Brendan being seven. Is, is seven a horror movie or is that a thriller? I think it's a thriller. I, I think it's a thriller. thriller. I, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm with you guys on that. Audience, I think. thriller. All right, yes. Right. Fallen. Um, That's an Evanescence album. Yeah, I'm, uh, Bre- Brendan says Fallen. I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, I don't, that was I don't, the Charles Stewart one. story. After he murdered his wife, wow. he jumped off the Tobin Bridge. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm scrolling back here to see what else we've missed. Scroll here. away. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Get them doggies. Uh, Thirteen Ghosts. Uh, House on Haunted okay, Hill. Okay, originals, are, they're fun. Okay, I've never seen um, either of them. They're William Castle movies. William Castle was the guy, the director, who he was all about gimmicks. So in the 50s, you know, he, he had the Tingler. So you saw the movie, and some of the seats had something under them. So you I had the Tingler. Yeah. Through you. <laughs> I was and looking for it in my house ghost, yesterday. Ghost and wires going through the theater. This guy was a very gimmick filmmaker. They're fun movies. They're, they're good. House on Haunted Hill is going to put some yep. price. These are all fun things to put on at Halloween. They've all been remade, by the way. And the remakes, surprisingly very good. Thirsty Ooh. Ghost and House on Hot Dale are definitely a, a, a watch. Do not right. Google the Tingler. You don't <laughs> want to see what products come up from Amazon. Right. Anyway. Pet, pet Cemetery. Oh! All right, let, me, let me say this. Fun. Anything Stephen King, for horror, except for The Shining, which was nothing like the book, sucked. Ah. I didn't like Cujo. I didn't like... Uh, Christine, I didn't like any of his movies. Pet Cemetery, I love all Christine. of the movies that they did love from his Christine. books, I thought sucked except for The Shining. All right, uh, I'll like give you stand. that. Didn't like I'm the stand. stand. I didn't like. I it. love it's Christine. Stand, stand by. Never sorry. Stand by me. Be- because I, I got Josh so Ake. ruined on his, on his movies. Watch. And I want to say this horror, on the horror side. You I know. You, have you read the Dead Zone? I have not. Nope. Okay. Well, it's about a person who, after an accident, develops. Um, Psychic abilities. He could. He, I could. Show Final hands, destination. And I could know something you're hiding. Oh, Christopher Walken. Back. Christopher Walken. Hell he yes. Cast better. Okay. Because in all his awkwardness, comes across fantastic. Yep. As the guy who now has had a brain injury. Yeah. He can see the future. Perfect. This movie's worth a watch. Yeah, it really. Especially if you haven't read the book, and I heard it's pretty verbatim in the book. Watch the film. Now that you really said it, okay. now I've Kevin, seen that movie. Kevin Spacey was in Fallen. Talk about, about a star fallen. that's yeah, fallen. Yeah, talking about somebody who's fallen. Oof. Was he diddling kids in that movie? Oh, ah. no, that was real life. I'm sorry. There once was a former <laughs> star from Nantucket. <laughs> coming back to this. We talked about the wine signs. The yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're all about Alli- the touching alligator. kids here. Yeah, Frank yeah, Pant... Yeah, alligator was a... Uh, Frank Pant was jelly. Was a Jaws ripoff about a giant alligator, which, again, for mm. fun... Camp, I liked it better when they called it Anaconda. Kind of the same thing. Piranha. Yep, Jaws ripoff. Boobs and teeth. Uh, the original Piranha, yes. The Piranha 3D it's, it's, with the boobs in it. Yeah. No, the original. Yeah, the original, yeah, the original Piranha was good. I boobs agree. and teeth. Hey, James Cameron, who did Terminator and is this Titanic. Titanic. Guys, he did um, Piranha 2. And I might have been Galaxy of Terror. He worked mostly as an effects guy at first. Uh huh. And so they put real maggots on a phony arm. Oh! But the maggots weren't moving enough. This is Galaxy of Terror thing. So James like, Cameron ran a wire through the fake arm that would send uh, electric shocks uh, oh, to make the, maggots make the maggots move. move. And they said anybody that can do make maggots act needs a picture. <laughs> so they let him do Piranha too, and that led to again Terminator. Wow. Uh, Titanic. So good man. Twenty eight days later, more zombie movies. That's zombies uh, fast. that's yeah, a pit. So fa- that's, by the way, that was. That's why I like the Dawn of the Dead remake, because that's, they were fast-moving zombies, which made them scarier. That's a period piece. If you want to see slow-moving zombies, you just have to go to fucking uh, Harvard Square in Cambridge, and you can see slow-moving zombies, and nobody's scared of any of those people. 28 but Days Later yeah. is a period piece. Yeah, but boom. Ah! You, you, you went all day to say that one? Twice. Yep. 
So it was 28 weeks later, 28 days later. There was the two of them. 12 yeah, Angry bo- Men. Bo- I thought both of them were good. Ghosts. But that was the fast zombies when you started getting into that. The Dawn of the Dead remake I don't, I where the zombies were fast. They weren't slow anymore. I don't know. I don't understand fast the zombies. fascination World with World zombies. World these. World uh, no. You know, I, you I don't like understand zombies? the fascination with zombies these days. I, I don't get it. I don't understand why the, the Walking Dead. dead. I, I, I never. Watch that. I zombies. won't watch it. I don't care about it. I. Ah, you're dead. You stay dead. I love the thriller video from Michael Jackson. Speaking of pedophiles, I don't care about zombies. I I think it's fucking I, I stupid. Love, I love zombie movies, but I like the fast zombies versus the slow zombies. More entertaining. Well, <clears throat> um, scarier. scarier definitely. All right. What about The Ring? Um, Great fucking thriller. Very good. Never sorry. It, it's oh. fr- it, it is frightening. It, Never it's, sorry. It, it will, it will give you that uh, you know thing that. Yeah, I don't want to say anything it's about. It's definitely worth a watch. Watch I also the ring. Know that the creepiness of it, which I learned, was uh, the actress has this really creepy walk, and I realized what they did. Cerebral palsy. Was they, had her, uh, how, how they do this? They filmed it one way and then showed the film in reverse. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. So the walk was all yeah. walking. That's how when she comes out of the hole it, and it goes back out. in the hole. Very, and, very creepy. Yeah, it is a creepy movie. All right, we're two hours in. We're like two hours Holy! and 15 minutes and We're like way over our time here. But I, wow. you, you even said in the beginning, and we've rushed through some of too. these. Yeah, yeah we, might, we, might, we might have to do this again and talk more horror I'd movies. Say, I'd say on October 31st, the actual Halloween. I yeah, no, well, we'll 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 say we'll we'll work something out. We'll 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 get Doc Mock right back up Fucking here. Fucking we'll, Doc uh, Mock. Hey, follow absolutely. this prick on Macabre Theater. Macabre on, on Theater. Facebook. You, you got you are you on YouTube? What are you on? Just Facebook? Uh, there is a, there is a YouTube connection too, but um, d- didn't go as well as I hoped it would. Yeah, okay. I used to do all my video my reviews and video, and it really wasn't worth the time and effort because actually uh, the reviews get out there written more okay. than they do. Video, so. Every, yeah, everybody goes to Rotten Tomatoes, and I go to Rotten Tomatoes, and if people on Rotten Tomatoes think the movie sucks, I watch it. Attack so. of the Killer Rotten Tomatoes. tomatoes yes. Another great but, piece. Yeah, so fo- fo- follow Macabre Theater on Facebook, and maybe his YouTube channel too. But you know, get Facebook. You'll see it out. on the uh, on the pa- on the Moose and Squirrel page. Yeah, we'll we'll put the link on the uh, on the thing. We appreciate everybody joining us today. Thanks for having. Uh, well, d- yeah, thank thanks thank for having me. Hey. I, I hate to see it end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know what that's like. Peace. All right. Live free.